College Football Live is presented by Wendy's, exclusive sponsor of Football Friday, and in part by Kingsford Charcoal. For a chance to win the ultimate grilling experience at the big game, go to ESPN.com slash Kingsford. Hey man, who are those three guys with Derek Dooley? Oh no, there's Dave Wanstead leading Pittsburgh in, coming off a very disheartening loss against North Carolina State last week. They played well, came up a little short in the end. They'll try to get things started on the right foot in the Big East in four and a half minutes. All right, let's get started with a couple of take your picks. Start with Washington and Notre Dame. Oh, you have to go with Notre Dame. They've played Washington seven times, won all seven times. The average margin of victory is 28 points. You have to go with Washington. They almost lost to Purdue. Purdue. Besides that, Steve Sarkeesian's never lost to Washington. Neither is defensive coordinator Nick Holt because when they're coordinators at USC, they thrash Notre Dame. Plus, Jake Locker's been outstanding this season. Yes, he has. I know Washington coming off a loss against Stanford last week. What about our game coming up, Pitt and Louisville? I have to go with Louisville. Louisville's a better football team. Let me tell you something, folks. It won't mark won't tell you. Louisville has given up fewer yards in Pittsburgh. They've gained more yards in Pittsburgh. The problem is they haven't been as productive, but they have played better than Pitt. But this is what I will tell you. Freshman running back Deion Lewis is one of the best, best in the nation. He averages 123 yards per game. He's fifth in the nation in rush yardage per game, and he's number one in the Big East Conference. Pitt will win this game on his running ability. All right, Pittsburgh and Louisville coming up. Winner gets off to a good start in the Big East and hopes to be a team that can challenge the seeming front runner in the early going Cincinnati. We will need you to sit between us during this game, obviously. Maybe, maybe so. While well, I do it every week when Notre Dame plays whoever or USC plays whoever, so I can I can be like Switzerland. That, that's, that's what I am. I'm Switzerland. You got some chocolates you in your pocket? <laughs> I'm playing quite, injured. I want quite. you to know Enjoy that. Enjoy the game. I'll try to restore order. We'll see you later. The hometown Cardinals kick off Big East play. The Pitt Panthers are in town with a new star, speedy freshman tailback Dion Lewis. Here in the Ville, there's an urgency to win. These loyal fans are getting restless. They're hoping this could be the game that turns things around. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime. Here come the Cardinals. Tonight, from Papa John's Cardinals Stadium, the Big East opener for both Louisville and Pitt. The Cardinals come in desperate for an upswing. The 3 and 1 Panthers come in prime for a run at the conference crowd. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. We welcome you to Louisville. The Cardinals just two and a half years ago won the Orange Bowl. But, Rod, they have struggled since. The locals, they don't want excuses. <laughs> they want results. Yep. And tonight they're going to try to get those results with a new quarterback. Yeah, a change and an interesting situation. Justin Burke, the starting quarterback, apparently suffered a, a bruised sternum in last week's game. But that injury wasn't disclosed until just a few minutes ago. Adam Froman, who practiced, shared time this week with Burke, he will be the starter. He's a J.C. transfer and All-American. Hasn't thrown a pass this season. We don't really know if he's prepared for this night, but we'll get a chance to find out. Now, as for Pittsburgh, Pitt would be 4-0 if they didn't blow a 14-point lead last week on the road at NC State. They're having success doing mm -hmm. what they've always tried to do, and that's run the ball, and now they're doing it with a young upstart. Yeah, you know, the big question for them this season was running back. What would happen with LaShawn McCoy gone, left for the NFL early? Well, the answer is a freshman running back in Deion Lewis who has made everyone say, what happened to Shady? No problem. This guy, fifth in the nation in rushing, great vision, great feet, has great balance, has a bright future ahead of him, and he will be carrying the load offensively tonight. 123.3 yards per game. Already seven touchdowns for the true freshman from Albany, New York. Dion Lewis set to star tonight for Pitt. And now joining us live from the field is Pitt head coach Dave Wanstead. And coach, your young running back, Dion Lewis, getting a lot of attention. 
What is it that you've seen in him that gives you such confidence? Well, he, he was he actually joined us in January, so he had a chance to go through spring practice, and and he's probably about as mature mentally, and that's the biggest thing with freshmen. A lot of them have the athletic skill, but it's a matter of where they're at from a mindset standpoint. He's Co very mature. Coach, you're coming off a hard-played road loss, and as you can see here, sold out blackout here yeah. at the Ville. No easy task, so give us a sense of the final message you just delivered to your team as they take on this challenge. Well, you know, we, we cannot get distracted. It's, it's got to be a six minute game tonight we got to be able to finish this thing and uh, you know the, as far as the crowd and, and anything that might be uh, an outside influence we got to be able to block it off and stay focused all right we'll let you get to work thank you thanks coach fifth year at Pitt for Dave Wanstead of course the former head coach of the Bears and the Miami Dolphins and there's Steve Crackthorpe his third year at Louisville came here after turning Tulsa around last year he needed just one more win to become bowl eligible but without it, Rod, the pressure has now mounted. Well, all around town here, the talk is about him being on the hot seat. You know, they're one and two this season. The last couple seasons haven't been what they're used to. But they haven't played poorly, even though they've lost two games. On the road, tough losses at Utah and at Kentucky. And they hope to play better tonight with this big crowd and a blackout crowd. A lot of enthusiasm. Well, Pitt won the toss. They deferred. Louisville will receive. And that is Luke Briggs to kick off for the Panthers, Doug Beaumont, and the speedy Trent Guy back deep for the cards. And here is Trent Guy. Shifty move, but he is taken down at the 21. So the quarterback change for Louisville, we will see Adam Froman. He was a Juco All-American at Santa Rosa Community College. He put up insane stats there, had seven touchdown passes in his third ever start. So he's in Justin Burke, one of Kentucky's best high school football players in recent years. A bruised sternum does not get the call to start tonight. They go with Froman. Big Joe Tronzo as the fullback. Man in motion is Beaumont. Froman to pass, his first college pass. And it is thrown just out of bounds, looking for the outstretched arm of Scott Long. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players, brought to you by KFC. Uh, starts in the backfield with Victor Anderson. He's a fast running back, ran for more than 1,000 yards last season. He'll touch the ball a lot. And then on the outside, that's the guy, Scott Long. Big time receiver has been hurt most of his career, but has a chance to be really explosive. And on defense, it's Greg Scruggs, who's left the marching band to become an outstanding <laughs> prospect at defensive end. He's a nice young man to visit with and a great story. Here's Powell. And below Powell for a gain of four for Louisville. The rest of the offense for Louisville is at the top of your screen. It's an offense that really likes to get into a three wide receiver set, and they've got three good ones that they can do it with. The challenge tonight is to find out whether Froman, you know, can help them get the ball down the field. Froman came in as a Juco, tore a lat muscle in training camp, missed two and a half weeks, but he was starting for Steve Crackthorpe's. He was competing for that starting job, but the injury kept him down in camp. So here's 36. Pressure comes. And Froman goes down. Gus Mistakis, the nose tackle for Pitt, penetrating the middle of that rule of the line. Well, he gets pressure and everything just falls apart. Gus Mistakis inside is the guy who makes contact there to take him down, but there was a party back there. Rough start for the JC transfer. Three and out for Froman and the cards. Cameron Sadler to return for Pitt, and he does so at the 41. And crosses midfield, so that'll set up the Panthers' offense well. And for the second straight year, Pitt goes with senior Bill Stahl at quarterback, 11-5 in that starting role. And at times, he has been heavily criticized by Pitt fans, and to his credit, He's handled the pressure wonderfully. Stand-up guy, mature, eight touchdowns on the year against just one interception. Yeah, he's taken a lot of heat. A lot of it started last season with that, that bowl game at Oregon State where they scored no points and he had a poor outing. And it resurfaced last week when they lost to North Carolina State. To pass. Swings it out to Lewis. And Deion Lewis with a gain of nine. 
Well, let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by KFC for Pitt. Well, we keep talking about Lewis. You will see him be the focal point of the offense, carrying the ball and out of the backfield. And then this guy, Doran Dickerson, after three years of really kind of not getting on the field, he's the top receiver. They play him in a variety of spots, not just tight end. And on defense, Greg Ramirez is the guy who really brings it from the outside. They'll need a big, big game out of him to put pressure on the Louisville quarterbacks. Second and one. Lewis gets the first down and much more. The freshman from Albany, New York, where he took the Albany Academy Cadets to the state title game and then left Paul Gallucci's program for a prep year in New Jersey. Well, how about what Juan Stapp said about him coming in in January, and he's, he told us this week that he knew early on in spring practice that the guy was going to be the starting running back. Fresh out of high school, it was clear early on in the spring he was the guy. Lewis again. This time he is stacked up before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Greg Struggs was in on the tackle, as was Tyler Jessen. And you know, Tess, we're seeing more and more high school players leave school early, skip graduation, skip all the stuff in the spring, and go to college a semester early so they can make spring practice so that they can have a chance to play right away. Seen that trend and it pays off as it has for Deion Lewis. Three receivers for Stahl. Instead, the carry to Lewis. And a little shake and bake and more positive yardage for Lewis Rodney. This guy comes from Albany, New York, from Albany Academy. That's a school, a private prep school, that produces Pulitzer Prize winners, Supreme Court justices, even Andy Rooney for 60 minutes. It doesn't Are produce you Division me? One tailback. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but he has overcome the obstacles and has made his way to the big time. How about that last play where he should have been trapped for a two or three yard loss? Great feet, nice spin move, picks up positive yardage. So it sets up a third and five. Empty backfield for Stahl here. Has time, and that was almost intercepted as Johnny Patrick was quick to charge in against O'Derek Turner. Patrick leads the team in interceptions. He almost had his third early on this season. Well, Patrick is a pretty good corner. I and mean, historically, he jumps on the first move. He's had issues at times with people who do double moves on him, but he will jump on a move like that and eat that thing up. He did a great job out there. Fourth down, they're gonna go for it here. They're in no man's territory where they can't really punt, and they don't feel confident they can convert a long field goal. So a little aggressive early on here. Fourth and five from the 27. Stall. Once again, well defended on the play. That time, it was Richard Ragland. And once again, he was looking for Turner. Yes, yeah, Stahl underthrew that one, and he got it out there late. So early on here, the Cards defense holds. Scoreless in the bill. More to come. Stay with us on College Football Primetime. A work of art, a finely tuned machine, a sanctuary, a command center, a sophisticated sedan, a sports car. The ultimate dual threat. Now get a new Nissan Maxima for 0% APR financing for 60 months. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, thanks, man. It's pretty... Hey, Sonny, toss me a Keystone light. Okay, Grandpa, but uh, why don't I just walk it over to you, all right? Come on, Nancy. Put it right down the alley. <laughs> okay. Ah! What are you, nuts? He's an 84-year-old man. Dad, you okay? You can't always be smooth, but your beer should be. Smooth brewed for that smooth Keystone taste. Keystone Light is always smooth, even when you're not. Uh, Grandpa, I'm so...
Introducing Arby's new $5 and one cent combos. Five delicious full-size sandwiches with curly fries and a drink, all for only $5 and one cent. But why the extra penny? It's for our world-famous roast beef. Slow oven roasted to perfection every day and freshly sliced to order. It's for our signature French dip and Swiss with hot, savory au jus. And it's for the unique taste that only Arby's can deliver with our new classic roast beef patty melt. So say hello to Arby's new $5 and one cent combos. Worth every penny and here to stay. 100 potato chips or 100 Pringles. Both cost the same, but only the Pringles Super Snack can makes everything pop. The choice is yours. 100 of these or 100 Pringles. Same cost, but a lot more fun. Everything pops with the Pringles Super Stack can. This is a special announcement. The public is entitled to purchase cars and homes seized by police and bank agents. An inventory of cars and homes are available now and will be sold to the public. Call 800-620-6812. Cars available from $500. Homes available from $199 a month. Down payment assistance available for those who qualify. For listings in your area, call 800-620-6812. That's 800-620-6812. Call 800-620-6812. The Ohio River, downtown Louisville. We're just a few miles inland from that spot. Scoreless here early on. Big weekend of college football, and what a Monday night is going to come your way. Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, rivals clash, an epic Monday night battle. ESPN's Monday Night Football, Packers, Vikings, 8.30 Eastern. And coverage, of course, begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 7 Eastern. Are you going to text me during that game <laughs> Monday? I'm sure you will. Cards back on offense. And the end around, this is Beaumont. He's going to pass the ball, and wide open is Chichester. And the big target, Josh Chichester at 6'9", just waiting on the pass from Beaumont. 38 yards for the Cards. Well, keep your eye up here. That's the guy who's going to really get going out here while they do the end around. That's the play where it happens. Everybody gets focused on the fake end around, and they let Chichester go free down the field. And Bowman did the right thing. Just got the ball out there to him. Didn't worry about trying to overthrow or underthrow. This is Victor Anderson now. Changes direction, looking for a block from his quarterback, and he's inside the 30, down to the 28, a gain of seven. Dom DeSico finally making the tackle. Well, how about uh, Coach Cragthorpe going to some trickeration early in the ball game? He has taken over as offensive coordinator, as uh, we've seen some coaches do when they get a little heat. They take over what they do best, and he's been really good at calling plays throughout his career. Says at this point, I want to make the key decisions. Anderson. First down for Louisville. Eight yards for Victor Anderson. Adam Gunn in on the tackle. Gunn is back after missing the last two games with a right ankle sprain. Adam Gunn, an amazing story in his own right. You're going to hear a lot about Mark Herzlick, the BC linebacker this weekend. It'll be featured on game day tomorrow, coming back from trying to make a comeback from cancer. But Adam Gunn missed last year with a broken neck. Two great stories. Can't wait to catch that tomorrow. Darius Ashley now the running back. And it was a bad snap. So instead, Froman just tries to make the most of it, and Gunn with his third tackle of the game. He did pick up four, did Froman. Now, if you're Froman, I think that you'd like to know the full week in advance that you're going to be the starter. Now, this guy didn't have that luxury, from what we understand at least, a press release issued just before the game saying that he would be the starter and that he split time this week with Burke, with Burke with the uh, Bruce Sternum. So... You'd like to know that stuff in advance if you could, but you're going to be the guy. Second and six now. 
to Anderson out of the backfield, and it looks like he was able to get that first down yardage. Yes, inside the 10, seven yards, Froman to Anderson. This is a key area for Louisville. They have to get touchdowns in the red zone. They've struggled in that area this season. Well, the magic numbers that Steve Crackthorpe talks about, when you get in that red zone, 75% says you got to come up with the score. Inside the 10, he says, if you're not getting seven, then the defense has done their job. Broman, nowhere to go at all. Jabal sure fine play there. The junior from Hollywood Hills, Florida, a loss of two. Yeah, yeah, Tess, you know, that whole red zone thing, I think you want to get a touchdown 75% of the time, and you want to get a score, a field goal, or a touchdown at least 85% of the time. You know, and I'm from the Bill Walsh School, and his standards were higher. It was 80% touchdown, you know. Why well, did it that, seem like most of Walsh's teams they did it. met those standards? <laughs> they did. <laughs> Anderson is dotting the eye here on second and goal. Play action, Froman. He's got it to the fullback. And that's a touchdown for Big Joe Tronzo. Big Joe Tronzo, this is the kind of guy that's a prototype fullback. He's a hammerhead. Well, simply get him out in the flat and make the small corners try to come up and tackle him. That's a tough task. He goes at about 250 pounds. Good start for Louisville. Tronzo, a three-time shot put champion in high school. He looks like a guy that would throw the shot put, doesn't he, Ron? That's trying to tackle a bowling ball about 5'11", 5'10", 250. They're taking a look upstairs here to see if Tronzo did indeed get in. He lowers the head. Watch that knee. And you can see his body look to touch down. It's going to depend. Yeah, where's the ball when his knee goes down? It doesn't break the plane. And it looks like it's the left knee that's they, down. Nope. Yeah, he's not there. He's not there. Now, they need indisputable video evidence. From our vantage point, it looks as if they have that indisputable video, video evidence. Yeah, it was momentum that carried him across to break the plane. But if you look at that replay where his knee touched down, the ball had not broken the plane just inside that cone. That looked like indisputable video evidence to me. You agree with that? Yeah, Joe Tronso, guy who, it's not often he gets a receiving touchdown. So he waits to see what the jury comes back with as the Big East ref, Gerard McGinn, is talking things over with the replay official. Well, they rarely throw him the football, let alone let him run it. He's typically out there just to be an extra lineman to block. Well, Crackthorpe had a great line on Tronzo when we met with him yesterday. We were asking about Tronzo. He said, listen, he's about 5'10", but after practice, he's 5'8", because he's nothing but a hammer. Hey, exactly. He's just pounding guys in there. There's Froman. Has to be happy with the uh, begin beginning of the game for him. That first drive, three and out. This drive, an apparent touchdown. And if it's not a touchdown, as we think it will be overruled. New to the program is Froman. Last week, he played a little on special teams. He was on kickoff and punt return just to go out there and take some hits. Now the starting quarterback. Let's go back and take another look at what the... the further review, it was determined that the runner's knee hit the ground before the ball crossed the end zone. Therefore, it's third down at the half-yard line. Now they got that one right. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the right call. Here's a split screen look at it. Look at the one on the left. You'll see the left knee down before he gets to the end zone. And the other view to the right, you can't see the ball, but you do see that his leg is down. Well, those are simultaneous lengths, the video there. So it shows the knee down on the right side. It shows the ball yep. on the left side. And Big East officials nailing that one. Up the middle with the third fullback now. And a touchdown. So either way, it goes Tronzo's way. Six on the board for the Bill.
see that there is another official review. Previous play is on the further review. Joe Tronzo saying, what do I have to do to get a touchdown? He's not the only one. The crowd's going, come on. Are you kidding me? Boy, well, looked to get in there, Rod. Yeah. Yeah, from that angle, he looked like he was in. Kept his legs up, airborne. Remember, it's indisputable and video evidence. As airborne as a 5'10", 250-pounder <laughs> can be, mind you. Are you criticizing his hops? But <laughs> I don't believe indisputable video evidence will be in play here. Take another look. Yeah, you really can't see the football from that angle. At the further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Well, these fans have waited a long time to find something positive to cheer about, and they made them wait a little longer on those last two plays. Well, it, it's a sellout crowd. It's a blackout the night crowd. They asked everybody to show up in black, and I'd say 90% of them did what they were supposed to. Ryan Payne goes old school, barefoot kicker for Louisville. So Louisville up early here. The new quarterback, Adam Froman. He sights seven zip cars. A work of art, a finely tuned machine, a sanctuary. A sophisticated sedan, a sports car. Nissan Maxima, the ultimate dual threat. Now get a new Nissan Maxima for 0% APR financing for 60 months. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. You know how football players huddle before every play? And what are they talking about in that huddle? Football. What are we talking about in this huddle? Football. football. It's like football exists to make us grill. This is no coincidence. We're not huddling. Oh, we're huddling. Yeah, huddling. Don't. Two half pounders, please. Even someone your size only needs one. Yeah, but I'm taking my mama to lunch. Buck 99 half pounders at Taco Bell featuring the new Nacho Crunch Burrito. A buck 99 gives you double the seasoned beef and all the good stuff. Think outside the bun. If you're like most, your retirement dreams have seen better days. But with nearly 130 years of financial experience, the principal knows a few ways to help perk things up. With our helpful tools and resources, we can point you in the right direction and help put some life back in those big plans of yours. Why not start rebuilding your retirement dreams with the principal? You are now the king, and you will be a truly great king. I'm glad you came. It'll be good to have someone around who doesn't need everybody. Where the wild things are. Rated PG. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Nissan. Proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Kingsford Charcoal. For a chance to win the ultimate grilling experience at the big game, go to ESPN.com slash Kingsford. This is one of the great breakfast places of all time, Rod. Lynn's Paradise Cafe here in Louisville. Been featured on the TV Food Network. Okay. Killer breakfast. You should have seen our producer, Steve Ackles, this morning taking down his omelet. He was regretting not going with the pancakes as well. Uh -oh. He wanted to go twofer on the breakfast. But Lynn's... I, I Boy, take, you egg up at Lynn's, you can get through a day. I take it you had a lot of cholesterol this morning. I, I went fried green tomatoes, <laughs> egg scramble. Oh, my. <laughs> Haven't eaten since breakfast. <laughs> we got a seven-zip game here. Adam Froman, the new quarterback for the Phil. And the burner, Cameron Sadler, waiting deep. And the kick coming from Chris Philpott. Sadler can fly. Watch out for him. From a few yards deep in his end zone, and here he goes. 
Cameron Sadler. Met up with somebody, though, at the 40, but a 44-yard return from the five foot seven redshirt freshman from Monroeville, Pennsylvania. This is a middle return. Watch him get to the outside. Watch the big hit. Oh, straight up. Big hit. Richard Ragland got him. Richard Ragland, the starting free safety, playing some special teams. Lewis, he is shifty. Of course, ESPN's college football primetime continues tomorrow night with an SEC showdown. Auburn and Tennessee. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN and ESPN360.com tomorrow night, 745 Eastern. I guess we'll find out if Auburn is actually for real. Well, their, their offense is looking much better. We have a penalty here. Personal foul against Louisville. So tack on 15 after that run by the freshman Dion Lewis. So Pitt has started this game with good field position a couple of times now, trying to respond after that Louisville touchdown drive moments ago. Here's Lewis again, and this time that middle was clogged up right away by Chris Campa. The linebacker from Florida had 12 tackles last week against Utah. You know, Lewis is a, is a different kind of runner from LaShawn McCoy. Yeah, you know, McCoy always kind of bounced it outside. He had that lateral movement that got him to the edge. I, I think this guy, Lewis, is happy to be inside and make you miss and just to run downhill. And he's a little stronger, a little bit powerful at 5'8", 195. Stole the pass and has it complete for a first down. It goes to Jonathan Baldwin, a gain of 10. And this offense revolves pretty much around Lewis. Amazing when you consider he's a freshman and he's got a backup who's also a freshman as well in Ray Graham, number 34. Yeah, and they'd love to get Ray Graham on the field more as they are now, but tough to do the way that Deion Lewis has started off his college career. One of the few thousand yard rushers in Pitt history as a freshman. Stall. Plenty of time. Now he's going to go to the ground. And he's able to step out of bounds at the 21 for a six yard gain. Yeah, you know, his critics have been all over him ever since that Sun Bowl against Oregon State where they did not score. But Dave Wansett says, you know, the best thing he's done is take care of the football this season. And he's only thrown one pick and eight touchdowns. And he takes care of the ball, doesn't get sacked. And when you're trying to build your team around defense and a running game, that's what you want out of your quarterback. Facing a second and four. And now Lewis shifts into the backfield. Receiver split. Lewis, change of direction. Look at that move. And close to first down yardage. But he is a jitterbug, isn't he, Rod? Oh, you like those feet? Late flag comes in. He can change direction, but he's typically not trying to go to the sideline. Answer the play. Personal foul. Defense, number 19. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. And that's Johnny Patrick, and that's the second 15-yard penalty against Louisville tonight. And did you just see John Dempsey come in and slap him across the helmet and say, be responsible, be disciplined? That's been an issue for them. Penalties. But how about the moves from Lewis? Shake, bake, change direction, but he gets up the field. He doesn't try to get to the sideline. Two receivers to the near side, one up top for Stall. Lewis gets the call. And he spins out of the initial tackle, and he's down to the six-yard line. Richard Raglan was able to wrap him up. Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, the home to this Big East season opener between Pitt 
and Louisville. A blackout here tonight as the Cardinals fans are trying to get something going here and what's been a frustrating stretch since winning the Orange Bowl two and a half years ago. They come in one and two, pit three and one, could have been four and oh, but they let a big lead get away last week at NC State. Second and goal. Miscommunication between Stahl and Baldwin. Yeah, Stahl wanted to fade, and they like that play with Baldwin. He goes 6'5, 225. They try to get that to him usually when they're down in this territory. It's a mismatch, but he ran the out. And Stahl was throwing the fade. Uh uh, not going to work that way. Got to get on the same page. So it'll make for a third and goal for Dave Wanstead. And his offense. There's Baldwin. Off the tip and right into the arms of Doran Dickerson. Johnny on the spot. It was intended for McGee, but it ends up with Dickerson. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. This ball is thrown high and a little bit behind McGee. He'll come into your screen there. It's behind him, but look where Dickerson is. He's running the deeper cross at the back of the end zone and in the right spot. Hutchins for the extra point. Slides it right through. Five touchdowns on the year now for Dickerson. He does it all. He's played wide receiver, linebacker, tight end, and here he brings it in off the tip. I'm in. We're in too. I'm a part of it. Colonel, I'm in. More than 60 million Americans have tried Kentucky Grilled Chicken. An entire grilled nation of believers in that fall off the bone taste. And now you can be part of it too. Try a two piece meal with two sides of a biscuit for just $3.99. And taste for yourself why 60 million people unthink alike. Make it 60 million in one. Unthink and taste the unfried side of KFC. It's time to feel what it's like to race for a championship. Time to strap in, because it's going to be a knockdown, drag out fight to the finish. Feel the champion get back to making donuts and a battle-scarred pro holding on to a slim points lead. Feel the threat of slipping too far in the standings and being so close to the top you can taste it. The chase continues at Kansas, Sunday at 1 Eastern on ABC. Access the most up-to-date information on some of your favorite products and services. Just turn to channel 602 on your remote and enter the world of Cablevision's on-demand market showcase. From the comfort of your couch, find out what you need to know anytime you want. Check it out now. Enter to win tickets to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame concert brought to you by New York Lottery's newest game, Sweet Million, and help furnish your home with some terrific design tips from Raymore and Flanagan. You won't want to miss what everyone's talking about. Tune in now to channel 602. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better ingredients, better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie. Our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? A Cinepie free. pizza, Papa John. be lucky than good. Bill Stoll just found that out. Intended target was a tip ball and it landed in his tight end Doran Dickerson's arms for a touchdown. An eight play scoring drive for Pitt. Celebrating its fifth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets All State makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked in today. All State has contributed more than $1.8 million in scholarship money. They do a great job with that. Don't you love that? that Indeed. That's cool. What this game is all about, educating young men, giving them a better chance in life, as has been the case for many years here at Pitt under the tutelage of Dave Wanstead, his fifth season. And there is Dickerson. That, that man has really come along 2006 top recruit three years trying to find a home couldn't get on the field this season has become a big part of the pit offense 
Kick from Briggs. A short kick and it is fielded by an up man at the 20 yard line. Let's check in with the studio. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Will Selva with the Sports Center right now. Chicago not only didn't get the 2016 Olympics, but were beaten badly, finishing with the fewest votes. Rio de Janeiro, it is. Meanwhile, the baseball season starting to wind down. The White Sox blanking the Tigers 3 0. The Royals are losing to the Twins 5 0. Delman Young, his first career Grand Slam. Keep in mind, Tigers need a win, and the Twins need to lose to clinch the AL Central. You can watch the Tigers and White Sox over on ESPN. Good stuff, Will. First set of downs for Louisville. Powell, good block up front as Powell skirted ahead for five yards. And he's the change of pace running back for, for Louisville. Goes a little bit bigger than Victor Anderson, about 215 pounds, six footer. Brings in a little bit more power inside when he's in the ball game. Victor Anderson back in now for Powell. Of course, Anderson was the Big East Rookie of the Year a year ago. And a local high school hero here in Louisville rushed for over 4,000 yards at St. Xavier. Quarterback just taking it on himself, Adam Froman, the Juco All-American who came in this summer and he pressed so many here at Louisville with his leadership abilities. Fiery guy getting the start tonight over Justin Burke. Yeah, he's out of Santa Rosa Junior College in Santa Rosa, California. They're up north from San Francisco. Very good athlete. He was competing hard for that starting job in camp before he had an injury and missed two and a half weeks. But Steve Cragthorpe, a lot of confidence in him tonight to send him out against this pit defense. Third and two, two tight ends. Anderson tried to lower the head. To get that yardage, but nothing doing there against the interior of that line. So Brandon Lindsley getting in the mix there. Yeah, and this was Miles Karajin. Oh, Max Bruder got in there. Also, 55 of the linebacker. Watch him step up in this hole after it gets constricted a little bit with a little bit of help inside from Humeas. 55 at the bottom of the pile. That's a nice job on a third and short. Corey Getchy in to punt. And Aaron Smith back for Pitt. Smith, fair catch at the 25. New place for you to get the latest on the teams you care about most. Chicago, Boston, and the Metroplex at DFW. You can log on for your local sports news, radio highlights, and updates. ESPN Chicago, Boston, and ESPN Dallas.com. And more to come, Rod. Well, I bet ESPN Chicago.com is blowing up with the Rio de Janeiro Blues right now, you know? Rio getting the call today, landing the 2016 Olympics. And of course, Dave Wanstead, big figure in Chicago sports for many years. Stall gets it complete to O'Derek Turner and Turner all the way out to the 48 a 23 yard gain. A oh, stall hangs in here tough tall standing in the pocket and delivers the ball on time perfectly to O'Derek Turner who beats Johnny Patrick down the middle of the field. And Derek Turner is the son of Odessa Turner, the former New York Giant, San Francisco 49. Lots of time for Stahl. And once again, that ball came loose. That's a live ball right there. And Louisville pulls it in. Justin Matthews was quick to jump on it. I don't know if he had possession the entire time. That's going to be worth looking at. He goes up in the air to come down with the ball. Baldwin does. And then his back gets turned to us. Let's see from this angle. Does he have possession all the way around? That's Turner. Oh. I don't know that he had possession of that when he came back down. You know, by turning like that, his back was to the official on that far yeah, side. He, but that's not possession. Yeah. That's not possession. See if we get the review he, here. Yeah, he never put that ball away. 
And that's exactly what's going to happen. Previous play is under further review. You see, he's pulling it down, almost trying to cradle it with the one hand. And now you have to see, is there enough evidence? Is there indisputable video evidence that he did not have possession? Because the call on the field was that it was a catch. So to overturn it, it's got to be clear. You know, one of those plays that in real time, in football speed, looks like a catch and a fumble, but then you watch it on the replay, and you can clearly see that he never secured the ball. Yeah. I mean, that ball is moving to me from the time he's in the air to the time he gets to the ground. That ball is moving. It's not put away and secure. It's our third review of this game in the first quarter. Big East crew is uh, earning their money tonight. Jonathan Baldwin. He was defended by Richard Raglan. Raglan did such a good job coming in there to try to disrupt that play. And then Justin Matthews jumped on it. Two good throws by Stahl to move Pitt down the field. Right on time in a good place where only his receiver could get it on both tosses to Turner. Excuse me, O'Derek Turner. You know, uh, Louisville's violating my pass defense rules that I talk to you about all the time. You know, protect the middle of the field. Undoubtedly. And protect the seams. Mm -hmm. That's good pass defense. If you rule those areas, you're going to play good pass defense. Bill Stahl waiting to hear if this call is indeed reversed. A couple times down at the goal line, they wanted to review Louisville's scoring place. And now this. As it stands, a fumble recovery for Louisville. But everything we've seen would tell you that it's going to go the other way. Well, you know, when they take this long, it starts to make you wonder, is it really indisputable to them? And that's what the crowd is reacting to now. They're saying, look, if you're looking at it this long, it can't be indisputable video evidence. I mean, our guys in the truck had a pretty good look at it there as he was turning and spinning. And the crowd really You have 42,000 people that are restless enough with the state of this program. And now you throw this on top of it. Yeah, he's in the air. Now watch the ball. Is it moving when he comes back down? There's that left foot down, ball still moving. Still moving, out. And to me, that's an incomplete pass. Well, there's Matthews. who got his mitts on it. Turner went up. Tried to secure it. And to further review, it was determined that the receiver never had possession. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. Second down at the 48-yard line. Second and 10. Well, Tessa, I don't like the fact that it took them that long, but it's the right call. That's what you want. Yeah. When it's all is right done, call. you want the right call. And Bill Stahl comes back out with his offense. It's the right call. That ball was moving the entire time. Turner was in the air, and we returned to the, the field and lost it completely. Now the crowd starts to roar here. Second and ten. Here's Graham. Ray Graham crosses midfield for a gain of three, taken down by L.D. Scott. You know, Tess, going back to that replay, to me that was indi indisputable video evidence. I think that was clear. I'm just wondering if the officials might have been trying to determine where to spot the ball. You know, since everybody ran downfield thinking that was the spot, they had to go back and figure out where the original line of scrimmage was. That might have been why it took so long. Final minute here of the first quarter. Well, that's brought out the best in these fans here. The blackout of 42,000. Looking for the defense to come up with a stop on third and seven. Pressure. Stull steps up. Releases and comes up. A flag is down, but there's the first down yardage by Baldwin. 
Holding. Offense. And the 77. 10 yard penalty. Third down. Jason Pinkston, the big left tackle, is trying to provide a little more time for Bill Stahl. It gets the penalty. He went to the same high school as Coach Wanstead, so he may look the other way on that one. Uh, they, they didn't coach it that way for Wani. They didn't. Watch the takedown over here. That's Pinkston. He gets a complete takedown totally on Justin Matthews. So instead of a first down, it's third and 17. Four-man pressure. And that is lofted and caught once again by Baldwin for a first down all the way down to the 31. So Pitt is on the move to close out this first quarter. Tie game, 7-7. Coming up, we're going to take 100 college kids at a frat party. Add a full pig roasting over hot coals, throwing two college football announcers the perfect recipe for Storm the Dorm. Rod and I will do just that. Our weekly Storm the Dorm is ahead. ESPN Monday Night Football, Packers Vikings at 8 30. You don't see all the 5,000 quality tests we put the Nissan Altima through. But you can see the result. The Nissan Altima, ranked highest mid-size car in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Right now, lease a new Nissan Altima for just $199 a month or get $1,500 cash back. Look closer. Nissan delivers. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, the original way to eat more chicken. My plan is to earn success on my terms. My plan is to outwork, outsmart, and outshine anyone else out there. My plan is to see things from a different perspective. My plan gives me a competitive edge. No matter what your business plan, choose Brother. Our full line of color printers and all-in-ones give you the features and affordability you need. Make your plan a reality with Brother at your side. Would you like to put a stop to your partner's snoring so you could go to sleep and stay asleep every night? Introducing Pure Sleep, the stop snoring solution. Common snoring is caused when the airway is constricted, causing the soft palate to vibrate. Pure Sleep is a patented self-molded mouthpiece cleared by the FDA, which holds the jaw slightly forward, opening the airway so that the snoring stops. Look at the difference in these before and after images. That is just the astounding thing. I have not snored. And so this thing works. It, it's easy to use, easy to mold, works like a charm. I'm sleeping through the night and so is he and we're waking up with more energy and not waking up in the middle of the night to say shh. If it doesn't work, we'll refund the purchase price, refund the original shipping charge and even pay to ship it back. Try Pure Sleep risk-free. Visit us at puresleep.com. of another wild season full of upsets and last-second drama. Huskies upset the Trojans. What will happen next? Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, Oklahoma, Miami, or USC Cal. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, college football lives here. show tonight here. Pitt, by the way, winless in its last three visits to Louisville, but marching now here to start 
this second quarter. Here's Ray Graham. And the freshman, the other true freshman with first down yardage. Double billing of true freshman running backs for the pit offense. They are blessed in the coming years. Yeah, and that's offensive coordinator Frank Signetti keeping Louisville off balance, using the two different freshman running backs, mixing up the play calling, inside running, outside running, and throwing down the middle of the field. Good block that time by Cedric McGee. There is Deion Lewis, the other freshman who's fifth in the country in rushing. But watching this drive continue with Ray Graham, and here he is again. And this time, Graham is wrapped up by Chaz Thompson. Remember all the heat Matt Cavanaugh got last season as the offensive coordinator mm -hmm. before moving on to the New York Jets uh, this, this season? Well, everybody's in love with Frank Zignetti. The new offensive coordinator yeah. came over from Cal. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a couple of freshmen to, to work with and, and an almost a, an entirely new offensive cast as you see him right there in the middle. That's Frank Signetti first season here, but he's gone home. He's from the, the Pittsburgh area. Dad was the head coach of West Virginia. Here's Graham on the screen inside the 10 and then stacked up ball came loose. The ball came loose inside the 10. Louisville football. Timely turnover for the Louisville defense. Yeah, and Pitt had been so good in the red zone in scoring touchdowns. And this time, the freshman, Graham, gets the ball up. Trying to fight for extra yardage. That ball comes out clearly. On that hit, that ball just lying there. It looks like that was Raglan, number two, who made the first hit. Remember, and it was Raglan. Kennedy. Little talk with the freshman. Coach Wanstead's been down that road before. Remember, it was Raglan who caused the would have been turnover earlier that was reviewed, and the ball stayed with Pitt. And this time, in the red zone, the Louisville defense able to get their hands on it. Roaming. Penalty marker comes in. It is complete and out of bounds to Cameron Graham, the starting tight end, but we'll wait on the flag. Holding. Offense. Number 71. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Uh, I, I don't blame him. Katea <laughs> grabbed Mick Williams. Williams is a handful inside. Uh, what is he, about 5'10", 5'11", 280 pounds? He's the heart and soul of that oh. defense. He oh. brings it. Look at 95. Watch him work inside here. He blows by Katea, and he just grabs him. Yet he still almost gets to the quarterback. So it backs up Louisville to the four-yard line. Anderson just looking for some breathing room, and he's fighting for extra yardage. Elijah feels the first to get to him there. You know, as we watched Pitt on tape, you know, we were both struck by Williams, number 95, inside, and just how he shows up defensively so much. He's, he's wreaked such havoc inside defensively. He's overcome so much in his life. His father died of a heart attack when he was just six. His mother raised him and five other children. Second and 11 now for the Cards. Froman. Almost an interception there, but that ball hit the ground. It was intended for Beaumont. Elijah Fields was there defensively. Looked like it went off his shoulder pad. Yeah, and the hometown crowd was looking for a pass interference call, but from that replay, you could tell it looked like the ball was on the shoulder pad before Fields actually got there. Adam Gunn tried to dive in at the last moment there and come up with the pick. Third and 11 now from the gun is Froman. 
Anderson trying to set up the screen, but nowhere to go that time as Max Gruder was quick to get in on the play. That was a fine play from Gruder, the sophomore from Charlotte Country Day School. He is a very active backer in this pit defense. Yeah, he's dragging that shoulder, though, as he heads off to the sideline. He sniffed out that screen pass right away and made a great play, but he's dragging that shoulder now. Getchy from his own end zone. And it goes out. We'll see where they mark it here. So once again, outstanding field position for the Pitt Panthers. Tie game here in Louisville as they party down at 4th Street Live. Stay with us. More to come. Hey, it's Jimmy Football. Hey, do you know what's wrong with your cooler? I'll tell you what. It's not. A grill. I want you to say hello to the Bud Light Grueler. It's a grill and a cooler. Ring, 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 ring. It's the future. Are we here? I think we are. It's a grill and a cooler? It's a grueler. Tailgate approved. Introducing Arby's new $5 and one cent combos. Five delicious full-size sandwiches with curly fries and a drink, all for only $5 and one cent. But why the extra penny? It's for our world-famous roast beef, slow oven roasted to perfection every day and freshly sliced to order. It's for our signature French dip and Swiss with hot, savory au jus. And it's for the unique taste that only Arby's can deliver with our new classic roast beef patty melt. So say hello to Arby's new $5 and one cent combos. Worth every penny and here to stay. What happens in Billups County stays in Billups County. I can see why. Remember, boys, what happens at the Caribou Lodge stays at the Caribou Lodge. <laughs> I guess what happens at the doctor's office stays at the doctor's office. We'll let the lab decide. What happens in Lincoln? Yeah. J.D. Power & Associates just announced its 2009 awards. And guess who business owners rated highest in customer satisfaction? Twice. It wasn't the phone company. It was Optimum Business. In nationwide studies, customers rated Optimum Business highest overall for phone and Internet. Based on factors like reliability, customer service, and even billing. For data and voice, the customer's choice is Optimum Business. Call 1-866-580-1388 today. This was my first sales job I've ever had. I've never done sales in my life. The income potential and the benefits are incredible. You make a name for yourself, you work hard, and you're always rewarded. Doing what I like and I'm getting paid very well for it. I took the chance and that's the best step I ever took. This is a company that will take you to the highest level that you want to go to. I just never thought I'd wake up in the morning and be happier. This isn't just a job, it's a career. Find your career in direct sales. Go to cablevision.jobs today. Blackout here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. 42,000 coming out to see the Big East Conference opener for both teams. Tie game 7-7 here in the second. Deion Lewis back in at tailback for Pitt. Here's Stahl. And it is complete, and he airs it out for Turner. A flat comes in for now. It's a touchdown. It was pass interference over there. There was a, a double move, a stop and go to Turner. And that's what they were calling. Thompson grabbed Turner to try and keep him from going by. And we talked about the Louisville corners struggling sometimes with double moves earlier in the game. It showed up here. Holding. Defense. Also in the play. Legal shift on the offense. Number 80. Play is offset. Replay first down. Stahl, though, has confidence going downfield tonight. You can see as he's been targeting Turner and Baldwin. There it is. A complete hesitation by Turner at Thompson. 
bites on completely. And that penalty wipes out a big touchdown pass. Lewis shifts now to the lone back. And here is the freshman. Slithering his way for four yards. Glad you're with us here on College Football Primetime. Coach Dave Wanstead trying to move his Pitt Panthers to four and one. Remember, they were the choice in the Big East preseason poll. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you here in Louisville. Joe Tronzo for the hometown cars got them on the board to start. Then a tip pass that landed in the arms of Dorn Dickerson, and thus our 7 7 ball game. Second and six now. Lewis, good block. Can he escape to the edge? No. Fine defensive play by Chaz Thompson, his fourth solo tackle of the game. His first career interception a week ago and comes up big against the ground game here. Uh, they're trying to run that power to the left side, pulling the right guard, John Malecki. Not good enough to pick it up that time, but a third and manageable third and three. Remember, Tess, earlier they went for it on fourth down there, so I think you got two downs to try and pick this up. Could be. Let's see how they play call based on that. Lewis. The initial tackle, he gets by, but not the swarm. It included Raglan, who came up from his safety spot, and the pressure up the middle came from big L.D. Scott. Now, that's the freshman mistake. You know, you slip the first guy, and in high school, you can make a big play and get away from six or seven other guys. You can't do it at this level. After slipping the first guy, get what you can and set up the fourth down. And they lost too much yardage there. They did. He's backed up three yards, so instead, Dan Hutchins comes on to punt. He's both the place kicker and the punter. Andrew Robinson back deep for Louisville. Tries to position this, and it takes a good bounce inside the 10, where Pitt will let it settle there. So Louisville offense with their back up against the wall again when we return. Are you one of the millions of people struggling to learn a new language? Well, thanks to our breakthrough software called Rosetta Stone, learning a new language is now incredibly easy and a whole lot faster. I've probably learned more in the first two weeks than I have in months of taking formal classes. Rosetta Stone is so fast and effective, it's used by the U.S. State Department, NASA, the U.S. Army, and Fortune 500 companies, and is the world's leading language learning software. It's almost like having your own own person there teaching you your own private tutor who is just very relaxed in your home with you sitting there teaching you the language Rosetta Stone is the fastest way to learn a new language and to prove it we'll send you our amazing demo CD absolutely free when you call this really is a great program I believe that you can learn any language with this program so call now or visit our website and see for yourself why Rosetta Stone is the fastest way to learn a new language guaranteed don't you just love how long it takes to straighten your hair of course you don't that's why a team of expert stylists have designed the most innovative new hairstyling tool that's faster easier and gets you better results than you ever dreamed possible introducing the amazing InStyler rotating iron the only tool that beautifully straightens while adding insane body and shine at the same time flat irons crush and burn your hair between two hot plates causing serious damage but the InStyler combines a rotating heated cylinder with precision aligned bristles this breakthrough design separates each shaft individually so they're polished evenly straightening your hair without crushing or damaging it and because it's polished instead of pressed your hair retains more body more volume leaving it gloriously soft smooth and shiny call this toll-free number or go to getinstyler.com and try it for 30 days for only $14.99 call now or for even faster service go to getinstyler.com ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Applebee's, it's a whole new neighborhood, and John Hancock, the future is yours. 
We're just a half mile away from Churchill Downs where they put in the new Barbaro statue this year, Rob. Of course, Churchill Downs will be home to the 2010 Breeders' Cup World Championships on ABC and ESPN. But there is Edgar Prado and one of the most beloved athletes that this area has ever known. Barbaro, great performance back in 2006 and winning the Derby. So I'm going to take in the Derby with you next year, right? May 1st, first yeah. Saturday of May every year. Look May 1st, right. 2010, you're welcome to come down. We'll be down there at the rail broadcasting all day long. Join me, my friend. You got it. Adam Froman trying to look like a thoroughbred here. Another flag comes in. But he gave a little bit of a Barbaro driving kick for a moment as Dom DeSico made the tackle. Holding. Offense. Number 82. Back the distance to the goal. First down. And it's Pete Nocta. A tight end. Well, that penalty doesn't help. Their own field position has been terrible tonight. Their own 17. And Craig Phillips trying to clean up things around here, clean up those penalties. They have struggled, and no question that he's on a hot seat in this area. You listen to the talk radio and everything, oh. and he's getting some heat. Roman downfield, good arm, and that was well defended, intended for Trent Guy, but Giovanni Chappelle was quick to get in on the play, and the hometown fans can't believe it. Great no call by the referee here, and actually maybe even should have called pass interference. The rule is when the ball's in the air, both players have the right to go for it. Trent Guy and Chappelle, they're both going for the ball. That's a no call. Now. The one thing I have a concern about is the shot that's taken at Guy by uh, DeSico. Because at that point, Guy is a defenseless player, and you can't take a shot at him. So second and 11 for Froman. Got a glimpse of his arm strength. He's going to run it again. He is shifty. That's a good, solid run. He was finally taken down by Chappelle, but eight yards gained by the new starter here for the Cars, Adam Froman. That's a dimension that Justin Burke doesn't quite bring to the party. And again, he's out tonight with a bruised sternum uh, that the team announced right before the ball game after he practiced all week with it, apparently suffering it last weekend. Third and two, two tight ends for Louisville. Powell's the bat. Play action. Good fake by Froman. And complete for the first down to Graham. That was well done by the JUCO transfer, Adam Froman. Uh, and you know, Tess, I think it's important for Cragthorpe to bring out a little trickeration, you know, and some, some cute plays. You see the nice ball fake here by Froma. And the reason I think that's important was Bobby Petrino did a lot of that. And Bobby Petrino, when he was coach here, had the crowd with him, had the fans with him because his offense was so exciting. And this offense under Cragthorpe has struggled the last three years. He's now the offensive coordinator, and he sends in Darius Ashley as the lone back. Froman able to slip by the initial tackle there, and then gets out of bounds, chased down by Greg Williams. And the crowd wants a call, and a flag comes in. Gerard McGinn has been. Well, they're saying no flag here. I think the fans were calling for a flag. They're trying to call a late hit on the sideline here, but he was still in bounds when he was chased out by Greg Williams. So they pick it up. No call here. Center will just make for a second and eight, and Froman wants to talk things over. A little burst of offense to get out of the hole for Louisville. Still tied up here at the Bill. <laughs> I've learned that hamburgers don't have to be round. Rich meaty chili can come from a pickup window. A side of fries isn't the only way to serve potatoes. One can enjoy a Frosty with either a spoon or a fry. 
celebrates our 40th birthday celebration, so we're offering our chili, baked potato, frosty, and double stack for 99 cents each for a limited time. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Air Hods is taking the world's best-selling RC helicopter and making it stronger. Introducing the redesigned Havoc Heli. The new Havoc Heli is more stable and easier to control. You can maneuver under, over, and even through the toughest obstacles. Fly up to three Havoc Helis at the same time and climb up to 100 feet. Build your skills and find exciting new places to fly. The new Havoc Heli has been redesigned with durable body construction, so there's less bash if you crash. Only the Havoc Heli is built Air Hogs tough, and it's sending all other copters into a tailspin. You'll get the redesigned Air Hogs Havoc Heli with controller charger, flight kit, and as an added bonus, the Air Hogs 10th Anniversary Pilot Cap, all for $29.95 plus shipping and handling. Batteries not included. Here's how you can order. You can call 1-800-231-8016. Havoc Heli is $29.95 plus $9.99 shipping and handling. You must be 18 or older to order. It's time to feel what it's like to race for a championship. Time to strap in, because it's going to be a knockdown, drag out fight to the finish. Feel the champion get back to making donuts and a battle-scarred pro holding on to a slim points lead. Feel the threat of slipping too far in the standings and being so close to the top you can taste it. The chase continues at Kansas, Sunday at 1 Eastern on ABC. Welcome back to Louisville. Good scene on the Ohio River looking back at downtown. 7-7 game here. And this week on ABC Saturday Night Football, number eight, Oklahoma. Hey, they're back in the thick of things. Taking on Ja'Cory Harris and the young upstarts from Miami. And some of you will see Matt Barkley and USC facing California in the great job at best. ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines tomorrow night. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Interesting matchups there. I think Ja'Cory Harris is going to see some blitzes after what Vontez brought <laughs> last week. Out of the backfield is Anderson. Now Steve Cragthorpe. He could use a good momentum-changing win. We know what Bobby Petrino was able to do here. Yeah, he got a great start. Look, 9-4 and four his first season compared to what Cragthorpe did. 11-1 and one his second year, a losing season for Cragthorpe. And now, year three, 9-3 and three for Petrino. 1-2 and two so far for Cragthorpe. And the fans are restless. They want to see some results. Victor Anderson, nowhere to go. Let's see where they spot it. He's going to be short of the first down. Adam Gunn, the strong middle linebacker who missed the last two games with a right ankle sprain. He came up big there against Anderson. And it's just amazing that he's able to do this. There he is right there. Watch him bring it on this third and short. We're talking about a guy delivering some power, dipping his shoulders and his head. That's a guy who played last season, opening game, broke his neck. It was granted a sixth year of eligibility from the NCAA after missing the entire season last year with a broken neck. Deji's punt is fielded by Aaron Smith. And out at the 23 yard line is where the pit offense will take over. And we talked to Adam Gunn about overcoming those obstacles. I really can't say there was a low point. I tried to be as optimistic and positive as I could throughout the whole thing. Uh, I really cannot say there was one low point. I tried to always stay positive and, and know that I would play football again. If I had that mindset, I felt like I could accomplish anything I set my mind to. And here I am today talking about my story and, and playing football again, which is, which is great. And boy, can he play. Dion Lewis out to the 30-yard line. So Adam Gunn, the star linebacker for Pitt, the broken neck a year ago, missed the entire season. They had to fuse the fourth and fifth vertebrae of his spine with a titanium plate, four screws in there. 
Missed the last two games with a right ankle sprain, came back. Amazing part of this story is older brother Sanford suffered the same injury during his senior season of college football and was temporarily paralyzed and didn't play football again. So one family enduring all that. Lewis out across near the 31, a gain of three. Can you imagine his mother? No. I mean, going through two sons playing football and both of them breaking their necks. And it's amazing that she's allowing him back on the field, but you know, as a grown man, I guess she can't really stop him. Listen, that's a that's going to be a theme you'll hear a lot of over the course of this weekend of college football because tomorrow morning on game day, they're going to focus in on the story of Mark Herzlick, the D.C. linebacker who's battling cancer. And Adam Gunn knows exactly what Herzlick is feeling. So a timeout here, 4.25 to go in the first. Time for this week's Storm the Dorm. And, Rod, after last week's great tailgate debate over the virtues of pork, we come hunting for some swine here in the Ville. We're just a stone's throw away from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium here at TKE, where, Rod, they know how to throw pig roast. Yeah, it tests every home game. They scrape together 150 bucks, buy a big pig, and have a big party. Like Rod and Joe said, this is a TKE tradition. We started around 2001 whenever I came around. Uh, we basically just get together, play every home game, roast a big pig, and have a good time. Another tradition we have is we invite all the sororities over, no other fraternities, all the cheerleaders. We have a great time, party all night, get up early in the morning, and go to the game. This is about teacher. It's about Louisville football, but enough of this talk. Let's eat. <laughs> oh, it took them four hours to cook the pig there. The boys at TKE, I like how they wrapped it up. I mean, they couldn't have secured that thing enough as if it was going to run away. I got one thing to say. Pigs are filthy animals. <laughs> this is going to end up being like a scene out of Pulp Fiction here. Is there any And you know I'm Vincent Vega. <laughs> Because bacon tastes good, <laughs> and pork chops taste good. <laughs> Is there any part of the pig you won't eat? <laughs> Third and three. Lewis the lone back. And just swarmed underneath his stall by Chris Campa. That was a big defensive play for Louisville. And that'll get the crowd going. Sort of like they had that crowd going at TKE yesterday with the... Take on the spit and everything, but look at that. Take on the blocker, take him on, throw him out of the way, and make the tackle. Chris Campbell with a big play there. Troy Paisley back. Excuse me, Drew, Drew Robinson back for Louisville. taken down immediately. Glad you're with us here in Louisville. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore. We got a flag on the field. 3.39 to go before half here. Doing a return. Eagle block in the back. On the return team, number 22, 10 yard penalty, first down. So a tie ball game here in the Ville. You know, it's not the full hot seat, but it's warming up on Steve Crackthorpe. But this is a big opportunity now with conference play here yeah. to really change the perception of this program, isn't it? Well, I think it really is a chance to show that he's turning the, the corner with the program, and he's got a lot of recruits that he's already kind of signed. Well, not signed, but they've committed to him. So he's got that going, and a good performance will help him in that regard. But they have got to get going in the Big East. They can't keep falling behind, you know, as they have the last couple of seasons. Well, they became so conditioned to winning here under Petrino. And that's a fine effort diving out of bounds with Scott Law. He is a great athlete at 6'3", 214. Personal foul. Defense, number eight. Helmet to helmet contact. Well from the passer. All the 15 yards added on to the end of the run. First down. Remember, that's a point of emphasis this year. It goes against Adam Gunn. Watch the catch by Long. He lays out nicely, comes up with that. But you saw at the bottom of the screen, Adam Gunn with the hit, helmet to helmet, and he drops the head, so he makes the hit with the crown of his helmet. 
And that new rule, or the emphasis on it, is not only for the quarterback's safety, but for the safety of the tackler. Lowering your head is a bad thing, and you can really hurt yourself. Victor Anderson. Not much room against the middle of that defense as Gus Mistakis and Greg Williams met up with Anderson. Don't do that. No need to drop your helmet. Keep your eyes up, head up, run right through the man. You know, just to finish up our point on Cragthorpe and the pressure that's on him, keep in mind, he had a lot of cleaning up to do when he came here. 22 players no longer with the program after Cragthorpe started shaking the tree and finding out what's what here at Louisville. So he's done a good job of straightening out some things here with this program. But in doing so, a little bit of an up and down road that he's taken in the past couple of years. Froman to his back. And that is Anderson once again, Max Gruder, but not before 12 yards as Gruder was able to take him down. Anderson, very capable out in space. You know, Tess, you miss, mentioned the 20-plus players that left the program. Some transferred, some were kicked out of here because of team violations. Add to the play. Personal foul. Defense. Number seven. 15-yard penalty from the end of the line. Automatic. First down. These officials are very active tonight as Gerard McGinn with another 15-yard penalty docked out. Well, Pitt becoming somewhat unglued. Too many personal fouls. And Wanstead's trying to put a, hit, a stop on this. Look at this just in the first half. Yeah. 115th is the rank on penalties. And it's getting to him again tonight. Roman on the run and that's incomplete let's check in with Will Selvin the studio for a look at what's coming up on the Olive Garden halftime report Will all right Joe thank you very much this is what we have coming up on the Olive Garden halftime show Reese Lou and May Day take their pick of course there'll be three games between ranked teams tomorrow also my conversation with Texas quarterback Colt McCoy he talks about focusing on Colorado not the looming game against Oklahoma also ahead the very latest on Oregon tailback LeGarrett Blunt it's all coming up on the Olive Garden halftime report guys back to you Thanks, Will. Well, that's an interesting development with what's happening at Oregon as they have turned their season around and maybe they'll start running back coming back. Here is Long, and he is wrestled down at the 19-yard line. Scott Long, big playmaker, and he returned from a major injury as well. He did. Knee surgery. Had all kinds of issues, including a blood clot. That uh, traveled from his leg up towards his lungs. Went through rehab twice a day for weeks on end. Said it was a tough, long process, but now he gets the reward. Third and four. Froman gets it out to Powell. Nice move to gain that extra yardage. And flags come in again with the rough stuff down at the 10 yard line. And they're getting kind of chippy out there. It is. This is like a hockey game yeah. here. You know, Wanstat's going to have to get his guys in the locker room and uh, say, all right, enough, cut it out. After the play was over, personal foul, offense, in the 27, 15 yard penalty, first and 10 for Louisville. Doug Coleman. Yeah. Wansat's happy and Cragthorpe, that's going to drive Cragthorpe absolutely crazy as they would have been knocking on the door. I'll tell you, Big East ref Gerard McGinn, I feel like he's a third man up in the booth the yeah, way he's yeah, been. Yeah, watch, watch down lines. here, right there. Watch what happens there. It's after the play, defensive guy takes a cheap shot, and there's the flag. Now that's going to take Louisville back. Not a smart play. So it's first down back at the 25. Froman. Diving attempt is caught. And it's Doug Beaumont, the man who just had the personal foul. Yeah, and that last personal foul was on Louisville, but there have been enough of them on pit this drive that one step going to want to deal with it at halftime. As you take a look at this crossing route, and yeah, he got his arms underneath that one. That's a good catch. 
30 seconds to go here. Anderson. Can he get the corner? He's dragged down. Ball came loose at the end there as he was dragged down at the six yard line. Oh, don't forget about the clock. They continue to run down. And now a timeout. You know, sometimes as an offensive coordinator, you know, you're not doing the head coaching That's right. deal and paying attention to game management because you're thinking about the next play and what you need to do. So timeouts, you got to have a guy around who helps you out. We'll take it with them. 17 seconds to go. Tie game. At my university, there's always something amazing happening. We're beating the state and national averages for ACT scores and making revolutionary advances in cancer prevention and adult stem cell research. We were named a Consumer Digest Best Buy and U.S. News & World Report has given top rankings to our business and education programs. And what's really amazing is that my university is probably not the one you're thinking of. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, when you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. Hail to pick. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you in Louisville. 7-7 game, but Louisville here. Inside the 10 at the 6-yard line. 17 seconds to go. Second and five. They can get a first down, but watch that clock. Froman taken down all the way back at the 15. Greg Romeus. He is a speedy defensive end. Yeah, that's just inexperience. Can't take that. Got to throw the ball away. Romeus is fast, and so are these guys. And after making a serious statement with a win at Dover, defending champ Jimmy Johnson keeps his sights set on the current points leader. That is Mark Martin, and he's going after the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. It continues at Kansas. Coverage begins Sunday at 1 Eastern on ABC. And last week, yep, I believe yep. you said yep. Jimmy Johnson would win at Dover, Delaware. You nailed it. Who do you got this week? At Kansas. Hey, should I like quit while I'm ahead? No, I nailed that. You got to go week. for it. <laughs> really? Keep it going. <laughs> Who you got? I'm staying with Mark Martin. Mark Martin. I'm staying with the lead. If only you were as solid on your Friday night fantasy football oh, college football no, picks no, no, as no, you no, are in no. NASCAR. Wait a minute. Then you'd have something. Two weeks in a row. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm back in the I bomb. We're going to have our fantasy football picks for college football in the second half. For now, third and 13, 11 seconds to go. Adam Froman under center. No timeouts. Can't have anything stay in the field. To the end zone. Chichester couldn't come up with it. Aaron Berry with the coverage against the six foot nine Josh Chichester. Well, you see what happened. That sack forced them to use their timeout so that they could make sure that they stopped the clock from running. So they didn't have a timeout left to take a better shot. They go for the six nine guy, but Pitt smelled that out. So on comes. Ryan Payne to attempt a 32-yarder. And he puts it through. So a high note to close out the first half. Still three seconds to go, but Louisville enjoying a 10-7 lead. And let's take a look at what's fresh off the presses. Part of Football Friday presented by Wendy's. And you can log on to ESPN.com. Search Wendy's for more. Some of the big stories, Rod. Yeah, saw the game last night. Noel Devine had a big game. A Big 12, Big East matchup in what a new you, bowl game. What do you game. think of that? 
Oh, Yankee, Yankee Stadium hosting yeah, the match New York the around Christmas it. time. I love the weather. That's got to be a lot of fun, right? Absolutely. Great Christmas atmosphere, time. Big East, Big 12 at Yankee Stadium. And how about the last one, LeGarrette Blount? I, I got to say, early on, you and I both said that we thought there should have been a way to leave the door open for Blount, whether that was a possible redshirt year or possible indefinite suspension and find a way to you know let what? him work his way back. And I'm glad that Oregon's coming around to that thinking. I think that's a really good point on LeGarrette Blunt because the problem we had early on is that you got to give the young man an opportunity yeah. to advance himself, yeah. Yeah. an opportunity to still move forward with his life. You yeah. just say, hey, you're done. You're done. Who knows if he's continuing with his education? We know he wouldn't be continuing with football. Yeah. But you got to give him a second chance. And it well, seems I, like he's making the most of that. And, and I agree with Lou Holtz completely with what he said. I, that decision by Oregon was made in the heat of the moment. Compare that to what Boise State did and Chris Peterson. They took their time That's despite right. what all the pressure was going on about do something, do something. They took their time and made a decision that worked out okay for them. Here's Graham. The short man, and that'll close out the first half. So Louisville got on the board first and last. They're up three here at the break. And now we join Will Selma back in the studio for the Olive Garden halftime report. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Welcome to this Olive Garden halftime report. I'm Will Selva. We are into October and into week five of the college football season. Tomorrow, three games involving ranked teams who are playing against each other. We start in the SEC. Fourth ranked LSU heading to Athens to take on number eight. Up the second half between Louisville and Pittsburgh. Adam Froman there with the touchdown pass. Louisville leading 10 to 7. Second half action coming up. This halftime report is presented by Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Check this out. Legal wall trip. That's how to pass. Okay, time for breakfast. Come and get it. You know, Dad, the shaker to passing is drafting. The lead car displaces air, creating a vacuum that can actually slingshot the second car past it. Where'd you guys learn all this? Friends. Best Western, the official hotel of NASCAR. Earn up to four times the rewards when you stay through November 22nd. Visit bestwesternracing.com. Hey, guys. You should have seen my dad. He screamed at the referee the whole game. My dad used a lot of swear words. We watched the game on TV, and my dad called the coach a jerk. Well, my mom says the refs are dumb. Dummy. My mom just gets embarrassed. My dad says the quarterback stinks. Come on, butthead. How about completing a pass? Loser! When I grow up, I'm going to be just like my dad. We welcome you back to Louisville, where the home team is on top 10-7. They tacked down a field goal just before halftime from Ryan Payne. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you. Boy, the home fans know that they could use this one. Mm -hmm. The Big East season opener for both teams, and Louisville's trying to just change things, trying to get yeah. that one win that'll push them over the top. A couple new faces for college football fans. The young tailback for Pitt, the new quarterback for the Ville. Yeah, Deion Lewis, the star player for Pitt, freshman running back. Not a great first half. Louisville did a nice job of hemming him in, keeping him inside, not letting him break anything loose. Tough first half for him. Only 37 yards rushing. On the other hand, surprise starter, Adam Froman. Not a bad first half. Very mobile, moving around. Tough guy. Took some hits, but no picks. Did a nice job handling the offense. Showed his toughness in there. Decent on 10 of 15 passing. You see the numbers there. He had a pretty nice first half, protected the football, and uh, Pitts just got to find a way to get Lewis free. I mean, 12 carries, 37 yards. He's been hemmed in. They got to get him out in space a little bit, let him do his thing. Maybe some screen passes we might see in the second half. He is shifty. And Adam Froman, if you're tuning in and saying, Adam Froman, who's that? Well, Justin Burke, the starter for Louisville, a bruised sternum. And they went with Froman. That was a decision made, a game time decision. This is a guy who was a Juco All America at Santa Rosa Community College. And he seems to have that certain something, that spark rod, that desire to just go out there and compete. Pitt going to get the ball here to start the second half. And this is Andre White. 
And White is taken down hard. So Bill Stahl and the pit offense back out on the field in the first quarter Stahl had a pass that was tipped and landed in the hands of Dorn Dickerson that was their lone score so far tonight they had opportunities though you remember Ray Graham fumbled inside the 10 the freshman backup running back it's a pass on first down and to the fullback Hanoski and Hynoski with seven yards to start this second half. He was a high school legend in the Pittsburgh area. Had over 7,000 yards rushing. Six in state history. And think about some of the great ones to come out of that area. Yeah, yeah you know, comes uh, with the genes. His dad was a fullback at Temple. Taught him everything he knows. is the 35 here on second down. Lewis. He dives ahead and he's going to be a yard short. The true freshman from Albany, New York, who has burst on the scene as one of the top freshmen in the country. Had 129 yards, a couple of touchdowns in his debut, at 190 in the second game. Now remember, that's true freshman. Exactly. I mean, we see a lot of redshirt freshmen, guys who've been on campus for more than a year. This guy only on campus since January. Third and one. Lewis gets to the edge. Shifty move. A flag comes in as Lewis is all the way out to midfield. 16 yard run. Holding. Offense. Number two. 10 yard penalty. Third down. That's on Doran Dickerson, so it comes back. Hey, you make the point of saying true freshmen impact players immediately in college football. Well, here are some of the best this year. Yeah, they stand out at you. Tate Forcier over at Michigan and Matt Barkley, quarterbacks. These guys came in early, you know, leaving high school in January, not sticking around for graduation or prom or any of that stuff, and earning a spot pretty quickly. Lewis, same guy, you know, January got in there, learned the system in spring, and became the starting tailback replacing Deshaun McCoy. McCoy off to the NFL. Of course, the difference being on what we just saw with those three names is we heard about the two quarterbacks. Nobody knew this was going to be what we saw to Deion Lewis. Now let's see what we get out of Bill Stull, the quarterback on third and six. One hand catch and good for the first down. Cedric McGee. That's Michael Irvin's nephew, Cedric McGee, with the catch for the first down. Yeah, usually he's an inside receiver in a slot, and they use him over the middle. Uh, kind of like, you know, Michael Irvin, when he's with the Cowboys, made all the tough catches, made one handed catches, could take some punishment. Look at that. That's a nice grab, fighting for the first down. Stole the pass on first down, and he has it complete to Turner. Turner was a big target in the first half. Yeah, they're trying to loosen things up so that they can create more running room for Lewis. They're running little stop routes in between the linebackers, making them think about having to get into pass coverage so that there's a little bit more hesitation and a little bit more room for Lewis to run the football. And here on the pitch is Lewis on second and four. First down, crosses midfield, and he gets out to space. Richard Ragland finally took him down, but another 11 yards for Dion Lewis. Right there, keep your eye on that guy, 27. Gets him to the edge, he gets Lewis to the edge with that cut block. Henry Hanoski, 260 pounds leading the way. Stall over the middle and again complete to Turner. 
And more first down yardage. John Dempsey made the tackle, but 11 more yards for the Pitt offense. And this is exactly the way Dave Wanstead wanted to start this second half just, with consistency. Yeah, just working the linebackers. Nice, easy throws. Make them defend the field. He stalled. That's his fifth straight completion. Again, nice, easy throws in between the linebackers, making them have to defend the pass as well as the run. By the way, we're yet to see Cameron Sadler, the athletic receiver who has a left ankle sprain, and his return is questionable on this pit offense. Stall going downtown and bringing it right in is Dickerson, his second of the game. What a big play, Stall to Dickerson. That was a double move again. We saw that in the first half, a double move that got them free, and they came back and worked it again. This time, Johnny Patrick was defending on the left side, and we talked about it early in the game. It's the double move. You get your guy out here, have him stop and go. Watch what happens. He gets clear. You have Patrick at the corner spot who doesn't have deep responsibility over there, not looking at the double move, and then the safety is late coming over. Hutchins puts it through. A big night from Dorn Dickerson. An amazing do-it-all athlete. And he's done it all tonight. This time, 37-yard touchdown reception. 14-10 pin. Radar to help watch for the unforeseeable. Infrared to help protect. Satellites to help guide. Electricity to adjust how powerfully or efficiently you drive. Someday, we'll all drive like this. The first ever HS Hybrid, only from Lexus. Celebrate Wendy's 40th birthday with a double stack for 99 cents, chili for 99 cents, baked potato for 99 cents, or frosty for 99 cents. Now that's worth celebrating. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Are nasty drafts forcing you to crank up the heat? Heating bills are reported to increase dramatically, causing your money to literally fly out the door. With Twin Draft Guard's double-sided insulator design, your utility bills can be reduced by up to 30%. Watch. Air seeps under the door, but Twin Draft Guard creates an airtight seal. It's adjustable. Slides under any door or window. Cut the length you need. Cover and slide onto the door for a draft-proof seal. Twin Draft Guard seals any gap on any floor, even carpet. Use on windows for an airtight seal. Block wind and snow. Insulate garages and basements. Seal in air conditioning. Twin Draft Guard is only $19.99. Call now and we'll double the offer. If it doesn't pay for itself the very first month, send it back for a refund. As a free gift, get the over-the-door ceramic hook absolutely free. You get it all, just $19.99. Call 1-800-709-2502. Order now and you'll get two double-sided Twin Draft Guards and the free over-the-door hanger for $19.99. Call 1-800-709-2502 or go to TwinDraftGuard.com. I may be in my pajamas right now, but I'm not going to bed. I'm going to college online. Education Connection will connect you to the right online college for free. Log on now to 2 educationtodaycom That's 2 educationtodaycom Honoring players and presidents developing leadership and rewarding accomplishment serving as a beginning for many and the ultimate achievement for others the national football foundation building leaders through football head coach dave watson said if you're defending us you better know where doran dickerson is at all times now the Louisville defense did about two catches for 42 yards, two touchdowns already. Our Sports Nation poll question, yes or no, will there be more than one Big East team ranked in the top 25 at the end of the season? Listen, since he's a top 10 team, I mean, they're contending for big things. But what about the rest of them? You can cast your vote by logging on to ESPN.com slash vote. 
Rod, you look at South Florida, they just beat Florida State. West yeah. Virginia, we saw how capable they are and how uh -huh. fast they are in this pit team in front of us tonight. I find it personally hard to believe there would not be a Big East team ranked in the top 25 when all is said and done. Well, the problem is, you know, unless they have someone else to beat outside of conference, and, I, and they're almost all done, it's going to be hard to change the perception out there. They're going to beat up each other in conference. Luke Briggs to kick here. After Dickerson's second touchdown, Trent Guy from the 10. And Guy is corralled at the 22. Well, ESPN's college football primetime continues tomorrow night. We've got an SEC showdown. Auburn and Lane Kiffin's Tennessee Vols. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN and, of course, ESPN360.com tomorrow night at 7.45 Eastern. Gus Malzahn, and at Auburn oh. offense, he has straightened things out, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they struggled last year, but they found some offense this year. Victor Anderson. Good, strong run to the 31. Hey, you brought it up with that Sports Nation poll question. But let's look at the Big East wins versus other BCS conference teams this season. Yeah, South Florida, nice win over Florida State, but, you know, Florida State now has two losses. That was a big win at Oregon State for Cincinnati, but it kind of went unnoticed. The Baylor not lost, win by Connecticut, a lot of folks were like, eh. Well, Syracuse that was when they had play. Robert Griffin playing quarterback. I, I understand that, but a lot of folks across the country still don't buy Baylor yet. Play action for Froman. And that is complete at midfield to Scott Long. He told us that he's still in the midst of developing that sixth sense with these quarterbacks. And they could use it here in this second half because he is a playmaker. Well, that's because he's been out so long. I mean, think about his career. He's had so many injuries. Every season you think he's going to start, he breaks a leg, he tears up a knee, and he doesn't get a chance to play. This is his season, his first season to really have a shot at it. Louisville to the pit 46. Anderson change of direction and gets it to the 40. Now Victor Anderson, who was the book Big East Rookie of the Year, he's a bigger runner than people think. He can bring something. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go back to that poll question you mentioned, the Big uh -huh. East. You know, in my view, what the perception is out there is that when Pitt and West Virginia are not at the top of the conference, the rest of the country doesn't buy the Big East. I completely agree. I will go as far as to say Pitt is the traditional power yep. in the Big East. Obviously, they won a national title way back when. And they need to be on top of this conference to get respect, undoubtedly. Here's Froman. And Dom DeSico was just waiting on that as Scott Long actually got into the mix and almost became a defender. But DeSico, the strong safety, was just waiting on that throw from Froman. Yeah, he threw into coverage. I mean, he threw into double coverage on the outside receiver, and this ball should not have been thrown. There's deep coverage coming over in great position, DeSico. And unless Long, if Long doesn't knock that ball away, that's a pick. So it makes for a third and five for the JUCO transfer. First college action for Adam Froman at quarterback. Trying to run for it. Cuts back to the inside, but he's going to come up short as Greg Williams, the Sam linebacker, was able to take him down. But he's going to have to go for it. Crackdorf is going to have to go here. The crowd will not let him kick this ball away or try a field goal. He's going to have to go for it. He knows it. Listen, this is a team whose lone win so far this year is against Indiana State. They lost at Kentucky. They lost at Utah. Yeah. They need to play as aggressors. Yeah, he gets it. He's not hesitating, and it's the right call. I mean, you're one and two. You're at home. You got to get something going. The crowd would just kill him if he punted now. He's got to go make this, this first down. Powell is the deep back in the eye. And Powell has it. The 215-pounder. Just lowers the pads and surges ahead for a first down. And this is a must-win game 
for Louisville. Look at what they have next. They, are, they actually are in a spot where they're going to need Southern Mississippi on the road. They're home at Arkansas State and Syracuse and Rutgers. They got to win their home games. They got to win their home games. They cannot afford to lose at home. Especially when you consider that slate and those teams you just named. That would be unacceptable to go south against that schedule. Broman unable to get to the edge. Gus Mostakis from that nose tackle position. Well, we hadn't seen, obviously, Froman before tonight, but he brings mobility to the quarterback spot. Justin Burke doesn't run the football the way Froman does. They can run the read option. He can scramble. Burke is more of a pocket passer. He can slide around in the pocket, but he's not going to get on the edge and run the football. Let me tell you how athletic Froman is. I looked into his JUCO career. He played some wide receiver before he played quarterback in junior college. And his legs help him out here. He just tosses it away, but the pressure was coming in after him. And it's Greg Romeus coming off that edge. And Dave wants that. Is upset. He wanted a grounding call. He didn't think that the ball got beyond the line of scrimmage. He took his headset off, walked out on the field, was uh, asking the official uh, what for. Dave Wanstead, his fifth season at Pitt. Three straight recruiting classes for a coach now that have been rated best in the Big East. So the talent is there. Have to get the results. Third and eight for Froman. Ball is loose. Still loose in the midst of that pile. Pitt signaling they have it, and they do. So on third and eight, the first time starter crumbles under the pressure. Now you got to take care of the football. Yeah, things that you can get away with in high school and junior college, you, you just can't do here. You've got to protect the football, particularly when you are in the other team's territory and you have a scoring opportunity. Miles Karajin getting in the mix. Gus Mistakis corralling it. Dave Wanstead seeing his defense do exactly what he intended for them to do. He says that's what we're supposed to be, a strong defensive team. Turnover goes Pitt's way. 14-10, they lead in the bill. Two half pounders, please. Even someone your size only needs one. Yeah, but I'm taking my mama to lunch. Buck 99 half pounders at Taco Bell featuring the new Nacho Crunch Burrito. A buck 99 gives you double the seasoned beef and all the good stuff. Think outside the bun. My school couldn't afford to buy a piano, so my mom decided to give them ours. It's the piano her dad gave her when she was a little girl. She loved it so much. I don't know why she was so happy to give it away. Hi, it's Julie Football here. Nobody likes number two. So we just upgraded you to number one. Introducing the Bud Light Boozy. It's a foam finger. It's a can koozie. Boom! Whoa! It's the stamp. It's the Foozy. We love, love the Foozy. Thanks, Thanks, Bud Light. Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, booyah! Hey. It's the Bud Light Foozy, and it's... Tailgate approved! Is your wallet too bulky? Tired of jigging to find that phone? Introducing the cell phone wallet from Buxton. Quality leather since 1898. It's the biggest little organizing wallet ever that holds it all, even your cell phone. Hello? Watch. The Buxton cell phone wallet stores everything you see here neatly and securely in one super compact, super stylish, and super convenient wallet, yet fits in the palm of your hand. Amazing. Attach the shoulder or wrist strap and your hands free similar sale wallets cost over $80 get the Buxton cell phone wallet in genuine leather for only $9.95 order now and get a second cell phone wallet free just pay processing and handling plus this handy lighted keychain and gift box with each wallet all for only $9.95 and ask about these fashion colors to order the Buxton cell phone wallet for $9.95 plus additional processing and handling call 1-800-665-0741 
ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. 14-10 hit on top here at Louisville. The Big East Conference opener for both these teams. The fifth meeting as Big East rivals. Of course, Louisville joined the conference back in 05. Stall. He wants to go deep again. And one more time he connects. It's Baldwin. Oh, wow. This pit offense has cranked it up. 71-yard touchdown reception for Jonathan Baldwin. Nothing fancy about this. This is just a go route, and he's going to get double covered, and he's going to run right by it. I mean, he's got two guys there. This is just Baldwin with his speed, outrunning the coverage, and Stahl putting the ball on the money. That's beating the coverage. Right defense called. Wrong man they were trying to cover. Too fast for him. Hutchins extra point. Bill Stahl has three touchdown passes tonight. Baldwin dazzling with his speed. Radar to help watch for the unforeseeable. Infrared to help protect. Satellites to help guide. Electricity to adjust how powerfully or efficiently you drive. Someday, we'll all drive like this. The first ever HS Hybrid, only from Lexus. Introducing Arby's new $5.01 combos. Five delicious full-size sandwiches with curly fries and a drink, all for only $5.01. But why the extra penny? It's for our world-famous roast beef. Slow oven roasted to perfection every day and freshly sliced to order. It's for our signature French dip and Swiss with hot, savory au jus. And it's for the unique taste that only Arby's can deliver with our new classic roast beef patty melts. So say hello to Arby's new $5.01 combos. Worth every penny and here to stay. Okay, Pixels, IOTV brings people every HD game of the Knicks, Rangers, Nets, Islanders, Devils, Mets, Yankees, Giants, and Jets. So, can we all agree not to play favorites? I all suppose. Right, sure. I guess so. Great. Let's shake on it. All right, let's do it. Yes! <laughs> no one delivers more New York sports in HD. IOTV brings you an extraordinary HD experience free. J.D. Power & Associates just announced its 2009 awards. And guess who business owners rated highest in customer satisfaction? Twice. It wasn't the phone company. It was Optimum Business. In nationwide studies, customers rated Optimum Business highest overall for phone and Internet. Based on factors like reliability, customer service, and even billing. For data and voice, the customer's choice is Optimum Business. Call 1-866-580-1388 today. Cardinals defense could use some love. They just gave up a 71-yard touchdown. Pitch and catch stall to John Baldwin. 21-10. Hey, the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Kansas. Cubs begins Sunday at 1 Eastern on ABC. Let's look at the leaderboard for the chase for the Sprint Cup because I know you picked, Rod. You picked this week Mark Martin. You won last week on Jimmy Johnson. Well, he earned the pole at Kansas this week, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to join him on the front row. Uh, anybody can pick Secretary no, in the no, 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 no. I got, no, I'm hot right now. But I mean, that's, hot. you're going chalk on I you. did Mark, not Mark. know he had won the pole position. I'm hot right now. Just acknowledge it. Come on. I'm two weeks in a row rolling here. I might get the win I'm gonna, out of this. I'm going to go Earnhardt Jr. Okay. All right. So let it be known, I'm not going with the obvious. I know where to text you on Sunday. Luke Briggs. Picking and waiting deep. Here's Beaumont. Tried to catch a seam and he was able to get out towards the 34 yard line. So what will the Louisville offense offer up now? Remember, a new quarterback, a Juco All-American who came in this summer, Adam Froman, a fiery guy, a leader type. 
but a young man who tore a lat muscle in training camp missed two and a half weeks and just this week started splitting snaps in practice and getting his reps and now thrown into the fire down 11 here in prime time. Anderson makes a man miss and then is wrapped up short of the 40. Another late flag comes in. That's been a theme tonight. It's like they're doing laundry tonight. After the play was over, personal foul. Offense, 79. 15-yard penalty, second down. And the beat goes on for Coach Steve Cragthorpe as he has seen his team backed up a bit a few times tonight. Mark Wetterer been banged up a few times, healthy enough to go here full tonight. That's pretty clear. I mean, defenseless player, Wetterer comes across very late. That's the seventh penalty, 75 yards on Louisville tonight. And this is an offense that just can't afford oh, no, that, not no, with their inconsistencies. No, no, no. Second and 20. And that ball was thrown low, intended for Robinson. Hey, remember earlier when we talked about the national perception of the Big East, and we asked the Sports Nation, will there be more than one Big East team ranked in the top 25 at the end of the year? Yep. Yes or no? Let's take a look at those results. Ah, 50. Yep. Si you are right, yep. because the national perception of the Big East is you got Cincy, everybody else and they don't trust well even the love for Cincy is lukewarm they, they've had to go 4-0 to climb up the rankings they weren't even ranked to start the season well don't get me started on preseason rankings now Froman nowhere to go he was pressured Greg Romy has finally got to him a good pursuit by everybody up front including Chaz Alexi from the defensive tackle and that pretty much sums it up if you're a Cardinals fan right now in this third. Yeah, yeah, the penalties are really hamstringing that, this offense, frustrating for the fans, and Pitt has a chance right now to take advantage and get good field position. Corey Getchy, that deep is Aaron Smith. Getchy's punt takes a bounce. It goes out of bounds. Bill Stahl. The pit quarterback, he has found his rhythm. I, I think he's saying, how you like me now, fans? His last two throws, big time. He found his big tight end, Dorian Dickerson, for a big touchdown pass. Then came right back and goes to the other side. Big Jonathan Baldwin for a 71-yard touchdown pass. Guy who's been much maligned and booed has had a tremendous second half. He's had his ups and downs throughout his career. Baldwin trying to get a little screenplay. He's going all the way back. He actually ends up losing four yards as Greg Scruggs never gave up on the play. The little drummer boy who grew up to be a speedy defensive end, Greg Scruggs. Oh, what a delightful young man we spoke, spent some time with yesterday. You know, he's spent all his youth playing drums. He did not play football until his senior year of high school. He was at band camp. Up until 11th grade, played one year of high school football. A late bloomer. Screen now. And the freshman, Lewis, for seven yards there. Well, how about uh, Scruggs and telling us, yeah, he loved the band, and his favorite movie of all time is Drumline. Yeah, Nick Cannon. The drum line. Yeah, yeah, you've seen that movie. Absolutely. That's one of those channel surfing stop bys for about five or ten minutes for me. Yeah, he says uh, he, he knows the entire movie. Says there's some technical flaws in it, but, you know, he doesn't want to spoil it for folks. He's a drummer. He knows what they ought to be doing. I asked him, well, you're a Nick Cannon fan? He goes, oh, no, no, I just love the movie. I didn't know Nick Cannon was in it. From the marching band in high school to the starting defensive line at Louisville. A little more pressure and unable to set up the screen to Lewis. It falls incomplete, and Louisville needed that. They needed their defense to come up big. They got the pressure from Justin Matthews there against Stahl, and now it gives their offense at least a chance. The ball will be coming back their way. Well, it's a three and out. 
and that's great for momentum shifting. You get a three and out. Offense gets a little bit pumped up by it. You have a chance to get a return here. So Louisville with an opportunity to get back in the ball game. Hutchins on to kick. An intern in the sports information office. Drew Robinson back deep. And that goes out of bounds. Of course, tomorrow you get your day started with college game day. CF and Kirk and the boys have a big day. They're going to feature BC's Mark Herslick, who's been battling cancer. And he's going to get plenty of shout outs from Lance Armstrong, John Lester, Butch Davis. Of course, the picks. That's what everybody tunes in for. And a guest selector will be a former Patriot star player of course live updates now you know I love when game day gets away from the obvious and creates these opportunities to do something special yeah. tomorrow is one of those days with Mark Herzlick and his fight against cancer up at Boston College you will not want to miss that Roman throws it incomplete well you know I we're big game day fans. We watch it. You know, we get home from off the road. We, we love it. But when they do things like this, you know, like go to Army, you know, or have this kind of a setting, we just get, I mean, it, you just don't forget it. No, this is one of those special opportunities to do something memorable here. And the story of Mark Herzlick and the fight that he's gone through. I mean, this is a young man that could have been a high NFL draft pick. Without doubt. Second and ten now for Froman. Handoff goes to Powell, and he is wrapped up right away. And the amount of support that Herzlick has received, and some good news came out this week that the guys will talk about tomorrow. But once again, he was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Great play. Uh, I remember the week that the news broke of the cancer story, that there was one article written that he was projected as the seventh pick in next year's NFL yeah. draft. And now, spending the summer fighting for his life, and actually getting back in the weight room recently saying I will play again unbelievable and you know the week he was diagnosed I was in the studio at college football life he called in and who does that he called in to talk to us about what he was going through so that's tomorrow on college game day a very special morning from Chestnut Hill just short of the first down yardage is Cameron Graham it was a third and eight and Froman was able to find Graham but it looks like he came up just short so it'll make for a fourth and one and Froman is not leaving the field well this one's risky this one's risky I, see, I don't like when you do it in this situation. This is putting all your eggs in the game. You don't make it here. Could be game over. Ashley. Yeah. And he gets it. Yeah. Good spot. So he goes to the red shirt freshman. Does Coach Crack for on that critical fourth down? Let, let me tell you, you know, my theory about this kind of stuff, you always want to preserve the opportunity to extend the game. If you take the chance where you don't extend the game you know, and game over, you got a problem. I mean, if you pump that ball, you pin them down, you get, you play good defense, you come back, you're still in the game. You miss one like that, fourth down there, game over. Fresh set of downs now for Froman. Quarterback keeping it himself. Tries to go to the side and then is finally pushed out of bounds hard. Six yards, but Greg Williams and Dom DeSico just drilled them out of bounds into that pit sideline. Well, he's got to learn to slide a little bit. He's not that type. No. Roman will come straight ahead of you. But, you know, defensive players will cut you some slack, but when you don't give yourself up and you make them run and chase you this far, they're going to get their leg. And DeSico gets the hit right on the edge there. He's still in bounds. That's a good hit. Nothing wrong with that. Dom DeSico, younger brother, is a freshman on Pitt's team. Freshman tight end. Ashley still on his feet. Driving it all the way down to the 30-yard line, bringing Jared Holly for a ride of 
14 yards. Well, he ran through the attempted tackle of Bruder. You know, some guys make a guy miss by juking him. <laughs> Ashley just runs right through Bruder. That's another way to make a guy miss. Deliver the blow when you're the runner. And he delivered a blow on Bruder and went right through him. A lot of folks in the Big Ten saying, why is Darius Ashley here? He was one of the top running backs in Ohio. Let St. Xavier to a 15-0 state title back in 07. But Cragthorpe utilizing him here in the second half. This time nowhere to go as Gus Mistakis was in on the play. Ashley's a speedster who they said they want to get involved just a little more, and you see it here late in the third. You know, back to what you said about the decision to go for it on fourth and one. Remember Cragthorpe talking about now being the offensive coordinator, wanting to feel those big decisions, yeah. wanting to control yeah. that play calling in a spot like that. Yeah, you know, when you're the head coach and you're getting some heat, you don't like to be the guy trying to explain why your coordinator made a call. You want to make that decision. That's what he's doing. It's all on him, and he wants it that way. Roman, nowhere to go with Greg Romeus just hunting him down. Well, defensive coordinator Phil Bennett challenged Romeus to come up with a big game this week. Here he is coming around the edge. He's a speed rusher, one move, and nothing but speed to the outside. That, that's what he brings to the table. He's such a stud, so fast, and just ran around the tackle. End of three, hit 21-10. When we come back, it's time for our college football fantasy football picks. Who will Rod take? Who will I take? What are the latest standings? Why couldn't I have picked Doran Dickerson in his two touchdowns tonight, Rod? <laughs> ESPN Monday Night Football, Packers Vikings at 8 30. Radar to help watch for the unforeseeable. Infrared to help protect. Satellites to help guide. Electricity to adjust how powerfully or efficiently you drive. Someday, we'll all drive like this. The first ever HS Hybrid, only from Lexus. I'm in. We're in too. I'm a part of it. Colonel, I'm in. More than 60 million Americans have tried Kentucky Grilled Chicken. An entire grilled nation of believers in that fall off the bone taste. And now you can be part of it too. Try a two piece meal with two sides and a biscuit for just $3.99. And taste for yourself why 60 million people unthink alike. Make it 60 million in one. Unthink. It tastes the unfried side of KFC. You cut, rip, and tear, but your brownies never turn out square. Need a hand? Now there's Perfect Brownie Pan, the new nonstick way to bake, slice, and serve perfect brownie. Party serving tray. This patent-pending design bakes each brownie separately, so they're moist inside and chewy outside. Holidays, anniversaries, or barbecues. Just bake, slice, and serve. Plus, it's dishwasher safe. Perfect Brownie Pan comes with the gooey and chewy recipe guide for only $19.95. You'll also receive these decorative stencils to make festive treats free. You get the complete Perfect Brownie Pan, 10 stencils, and recipe guide for only $19.95. To order Perfect Brownie for $19.95 plus additional processing and handling, call 1-800-790-3219. That's 1-800-790-3219. Don't wait. Call now at 1-800-790-3219. You're stuck on a treadmill. You're making minimum payments on your credit cards, and you just don't get anywhere. Call Consolidated Credit. They'll get the credit card companies to reduce or eliminate your interest. Get off the treadmill. Get on with your life. Call toll free 1 800 440 5217. Consolidated credit. When credit card debt is the problem, they're the solution. of another wild season full of upsets and last-second drama. Huskies upset the Trojans. What will happen next? Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, Oklahoma, Miami, or USC Cal. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, college football lives here. Stall going downtown. What a big play. Stall to Dickerson. Stall 
He wants to go deep again. Oh, wow. This pit offense has cranked it up. 71-yard touchdown reception for Jonathan Baldwin. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore back with you in Louisville. Pit up 21-10 and watching those highlights, you can tell that that pig in Storm the Dorm segment wasn't the only thing roasted tonight because the defensive backs of Louisville have had a tough time against Pitt's offense, but now it's the Louisville offense that can try to salvage this one here early on. You're bummed that you didn't get to take any of that pig home. I may go back to that frat house tonight just to see if there's any leftovers. Third and 16 for Froman. Pressure came, so he swings it out to Ashley. Going to be well short of the line to make. Miles Karajan in there, and decision time once again for Cragthorpe. Well, you know, you, you told your team at the 49-yard line that this was an important drive to score. So you, you got to go. You can't now kick. And you may feel like you're out of the range, so you got to go. You got to come up with 11 yards here. You've already made the commitment, yeah, right? Exactly. Went for it once. And you were back at midfield, and now fourth and 11. Now three points would pull you within a one possession game. Pressure up the middle, and he goes down again. Jabal Sher, prototypical defensive end. He's a playmaker, the fifth sack tonight. Of Roman. Well, Shirt is on the opposite side of Romeus, and he's a speed guy from here. And when you have two speed guys on the outside, that just creates a lot of nervous. Nice swim move to get inside, just beats his tackle, Tomzik, with that inside move. Five sacks on the night. Ray Graham, the lone back now. Stahl still passing, and that is incomplete. He was looking for Turner again. I want to remind you that there's a new place for you to go to get the latest on the teams you care about most. If you live in Chicago, Boston, DFW, you can log on. All the local sports, news, radio, highlights, and updates. ESPN Boston, Chicago, and ESPNDallas.com. Well, wait a minute. Wait. I don't have to live there to do that, right? Oh, no, no. I'm no, going to no. check it from Oh, you check oh, it from the right. Bay Area. Thank you. ESPNBoston.com, of course, the buzz is game day being at BC and they're going to feature the inspirational story of Mark Herzlick tomorrow the all-american linebacker who's been battling cancer you will not want to miss that a very special day on game day tomorrow morning this is Ray Graham for six yards Graham the true freshman they got the dual true freshman in the backfield remember he fumbled inside the 10 yard line earlier tonight that's just a, a learning process. They go right back to him, keep him, get him back in the ball game, give him the ball. He's going to play a lot of football for Pitt. Don't let him sulk about having put one on the carpet. Freshman from Elizabeth, New Jersey, stays in on third and four. Stall from the gun, hands off, and another first down for the Pitt Panthers. Remember the words of advice he received from the veteran coach. This was after the fumble in the first half. That's good coaching. That is good coaching. You're going to play, secure the football. I'm not mad at you. We're going to put you back out there. Keep playing, take care of the football. And he kept his word as he commits to him here in the fourth quarter as they're trying to seal this win. Good use of his blocks and spins ahead. Crosses the 45 down to the 44. John Dempsey made the tackle. Dempsey's another Juco All-American who ended up at Louisville. He is a big, strong, fast-running linebacker. A lot of Juco players in Louisville because of what uh, Cragthorpe went through early on, losing more than 20 players on scholarship because of team violations and legal problems, had to find a way to replace those losses. Part of the cleanup process that Steve Cragthorpe put this program through after Bobby Petrino exited. Graham and just puts down that shoulder. Oh, oh man. And he tries to fight for that first down yardage. Oh, he likes it too. I don't blame him. Did you see that? Wow. I mean, he's not supposed to be able to do that. 5'9, 185. Watch this guy lower his shoulder. 
and deliver a blow. He's not going to take it. He delivers it there to Chaz Thompson. That's finishing a run. That is finishing off a run and getting everything out of it you can. Saw Antoine Kennedy seem to be injured there for the Louisville Cardinals defense. We'll take a break. 21-10 pit. These were only the things you wanted to happen. What happened? I'll eat you up. I love you so. Where the Wild Things Are. Rated PG. Starts October 16th. Don't you just love how long it takes to straighten your hair? Of course you don't. That's why a team of expert stylists have designed the most innovative new hairstyling tool that's faster, easier, and gets you better results than you ever dreamed possible. Introducing the amazing InStyler Rotating Iron, the only tool that beautifully straightens while adding insane body and shine at the same time. Flat irons crush and burn your hair between two hot plates, causing serious damage. But the InStyler combines a rotating heated cylinder with precision aligned bristles. This breakthrough design separates each shaft individually so they're polished evenly straightening your hair without crushing or damaging it and because it's polished instead of pressed your hair retains more body more volume leaving it gloriously soft smooth and shiny call this toll-free number or go to getinstyler.com and try it for 30 days for only $14.99 call now or for even faster service go to getinstyler.com It seems no matter what channel you're watching, everyone's talking about the Snuggie, the ultra-soft blanket that has sleeves. But the one question we keep getting is, when are you going to make one that looks a little more stylish for me? The answer is, we just did. Introducing the new Snuggie Designer Series, a thicker, more luxurious fleece, now in gorgeous fashion prints and colors, like our cozy and warm leopard fleece that looks as good as it feels. There's also our cute and cuddly zebra print to keep you nice and toasty. Toasty. With Snuggie, you can use your remote, enjoy a snack, talk on the phone, do what you need to, all while wrapped in total warmth and comfort for only $19.95. You'll also receive our compact press and open book light, a $15 value free. But call right now and we'll give you a second Snuggie and book light free. Just pay processing and handling. Yes, you get it all for only $19.95. Call 1-800-507-8139 or go online at designersnuggie.com. Will Salvo with the Sports Center right now. Well, the Tigers needed to win, and the Twins lost to clinch the AL Central, but Detroit did not hold up their end of the bargain. Scott Pesednik led off with a home run and went downhill from there. Currently, the Twins are beating the Royals. It would be one game back with two to play in the AL Central if that score holds up. Right now from Chavez Ravine, the Rockies are leading two to nothing thanks to Jorvi Toriava's two-run double in the first, his third straight game with an RBI. Guys, back to you. How about the Rockies? Yeah, a chance Post to win season, the little huh? Rocktober. Yeah. Here's Kramis. Stahl had a dive to make that handoff. And lucky he did because Ray Graham had another strong run. Well, you know, you brought up the point of what good coaching by Dave Wanstead to pull the young man aside, a true freshman, and say, hey, I got faith in you. I'm going to yep. send you back out there. Look what he's done here. In the he, fourth. He's, he's paying him off, too. I mean, he's responded. He's played hard, run with the football hard, protected it. He's going to play a lot of football here at Pitt. Well, he loves the run game, does Wanstead. And there is a guy that Pitt fans are going to love for years to come. Dion Lewis, the other true frosh, came in fifth in the country in yards per game rushing. And now a heavy dose of Ray Graham. Well, you have to remember, a little flashback here, Dave Wanstat, he was an offensive lineman here. Back in the early 70s. Three-year starter. And speaking of good freshman running back, now he captained a 73 team. Johnny Major's first year there, won the Fiesta Bowl. Beginning of a successful era. The freshman running back that he blocked for back then? <laughs> Got to be Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett. Yep, TD. Ran for over 1,600 yards in 1973 when Dave Wanstead was blocking and trying to pave the way. 
Second and seven. Stall. First down yardage and out of bounds. And once again, it's Dorn Dickerson who's had a whale of a game. Uh, Pittsburgh history. I mean, how about being included on that list? Yeah, yeah you talk about Tony Dorsett, LaShawn McCoy, Curtis Richards, and uh, Lewis, after five games, on track to run for more than a thousand yards. Grossly under recruited was Dion Lewis. He went to a prestigious prep school in Albany, New York, the Albany Academy, and then went to Blair Academy in New Jersey to try to get a little more attention. But it was Wanstead and company who had faith. And now they reap the rewards. Here's Graham again. Breaks to the outside. Cuts back and gets it down to the 10. Gray Graham is now showing you what he is capable of. And, and some stamina as he's carried the ball almost exclusively on this drive. And, and Ted, this is how you finish ball games. You know, you have to run to finish off a game. Running to not only eat the clock up, but to demoralize your opponent. There's nothing like pounding the football down their throat. This is the 10th play of the drive, and almost, what, 80% of it has been on the ground. This drive alone, Ray Graham, 45 yards. Bill Stahl. That was almost picked off. He tried to get it out to the fullback, but instead Chris Campa broke on that ball. That's a great job by Campa, considering that you know they've been running the ball, pounding it down Louisville's throat for Campa to even think about pass in that situation, recognizing his keys. Fantastic. They tried to toss it out there to Hynoski. He threw that to the inside shoulder. Didn't lead his fullback. And Campa was quick to jump on it there. So that stops the clock after this long drive where they've been taking a lot of time off the clock. Lone back once again is Graham on third and four. Graham. Dancing still on his feet and he spins for the first down that play from the very beginning had a tackle for loss written all over it But no first down Pittsburgh, you know, it kind of looked like Lewis on that run well, The way he had the nice spin move in the cut watch him here. He he peels back which you don't want to do But he manages to slip about four tackles Got a defensive player down for Louisville. Is that Daniel Covington? It, it is like Daniel Covington. Covington. Yeah. That is Covington, the strong safety from Lexington, the senior. Well, I want to remind you that college football primetime continues tomorrow night. We're going SEC on you. Auburn, their first road test. And they're going to take on Lane Kiffin's Tennessee team. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN and ESPN360.com tomorrow night at 745 Eastern. Well, Eric Berry and that Tennessee defense will get tested, but that's a pretty good defense, and that Auburn offense may have a lot of trouble with that defense. I think Tennessee is pretty good on the defensive side of the ball. So Wanstead, his kind of drive, time-consuming, ground game, 10 yards at a time, and now a first and goal. Graham, straight through the middle and right across the goal line. Touchdown, Ray Graham, absolutely untouched. Uh, when you have a lead blocker like Hynoski, watch number 27 help clear the way here. Look at, look at him just take on that defender and really just demolish Campa. Chris Campa, 43, to open up the hole for Graham. There's Hynoski, and he, he gets a lot of credit for that touchdown run, for that drive with some great blocking. And now Dan Hutchins, the former walk-on who earned a scholarship with his fourth extra point of the night. The future for Pitt looks great with these freshman running backs. 28-10, Panthers.
Searching for something really fresh? Well, you don't have to sail around the world to get it. Just think Australian. Cruise into Outback Steakhouse and try a variety of delicious entrees made just for you and only $9.95 each. Like our juicy signature sirloin, aged and seared to perfection. Or with our tasty grilled shrimp on the barbie. Each served with our famous freshly made sides at just $9.95. At these prices, you can sail in every day. Live adventurous. Go Outback. If you're like most, your retirement dreams have seen better days. But with nearly 130 years of financial experience, the principal knows a few ways to help perk things up. With our helpful tools and resources, we can point you in the right direction and help put some life back in those big plans of yours. Why not start rebuilding your retirement dreams with the principal? the most up-to-date information on some of your favorite products and services. Just turn to channel 602 on your remote and enter the world of Cablevision's on-demand market showcase. From the comfort of your couch, find out what you need to know anytime you want. Check it out now. Enter to win tickets to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame concert brought to you by New York Lottery's newest game, Sweet Million, and help furnish your home with some terrific design tips from Raymore and Flanagan. You won't want to miss what everyone's talking about. Tune in now to channel 602. The fans, the cheers, the thrill, Come on, guys, the game is on. The game. Score big with a new HD TV from PC Richard & Son. Save on the largest selection of quality brand HD TVs like Panasonic and pay no interest for 100 weeks. We deliver, we install, and we service what we sell. PC Richard & Son, 100 years, here for you always. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Live adventurous. Go Outback. Hit on top 28 to 10 here in Louisville. They haven't won in Louisville since 1983, but some of the fans made the road trip to see if they could snap that. They're on course to do so with 847 to go. Nice drive that Ray Graham finished off 12 plays, 63 yards. Almost all on the ground. Kevin Harper now to kick for the Panthers. Beaumont fields it shortstop style at the five. And a very decent return by Doug Beaumont. Let's check in with J.P. Della Cameron. Hosting the Chicago Fire. You can see the game up next on ESPN2. Thanks, JP. 11 18 start time for the MLS game. Now, oh, there's Victor Anderson, who we were told yesterday is a huge soccer fan, loves Real Madrid. So, you know, he may be heading back to catch a little MLS. Right now, he's hoping to catch a touchdown pass. But Adam Froman has been under pressure. Throughout this second half, Jabal Sherd once again. Six sacks now. Well, that's what they needed to do. They needed to get their defensive ends involved, and Pitt has done that with the sacks tonight. There is Anderson. Anderson's a good talent. You're not seeing the full display tonight with the course of the way the game has gone. But last year, the rookie of the year, very solid all-purpose back and chased down from behind. What do you have, more than 1,000 yards rushing last season or something like that? 600-yard games in his career, and you can tell, looks like he may be dealing with a cramp here. Not quite the way Real Madrid does it Louisville tonight. And that's his favorite team in all sports. Well, he'll get a chance to watch him tonight a little bit later on after he showers up and heads back home. MLS starting once again at 11.18 tonight. Estimated start time for that game. 
And that is incomplete. Scott Long, who's a very big athletic target, but another guy for this Louisville offense that was unable to really make a big impact. Of course, our college fantasy football challenge, one of our ways to get you ready for the full Saturday of college football beyond the obvious. And the rules Rod and I go by is you got to pick quarterback, running back, receiver from different conferences, and you can never use the same guy twice. So there's last week. Mm -hmm. I, we didn't really have a good week. You beat no, me 57-53. No. no, that makes it, what, two weeks for you, two weeks for me. Job at best had a very <laughs> mediocre game, and yet you yeah. still beat me. Yeah. Uh, I got the season lead. How often am I going to get up. that out of job at best? That last week was just ridiculous on that front. So back to the running game with Lewis. So now, time to reveal our college football fantasy yep. picks for this week, which direction are you going in? Oh, I'm all over the board this week. You could actually, you, sure, you could jump me this I, week I on the season I think I might total. because I've got a nice quarterback going this week. I've got Pike from Cincinnati, got him going. I've got C.J. Spiller, Clemson, running the football for me. And I'm going with Tulsa's Darius Johnson oh. at wide receiver for me. <laughs> You're and doing I, the negation. I, I have the Tulsa quarterback, G.J. <laughs> Kinney. Oh, well, we'll get back to that after this play. I can't believe you pulled that one on me. Stall to pass here, and he gets it out to Cedric McGee. First down yardage for Pitt. Now I can't believe you did that to me. Well, if you're going to have the selection of the wide receiver for my quarterback on Tulsa, and you're also going with my theory of go with the offense that's playing right. Look, look, I had no idea that you were going with DJ Kitty. Now the one for me is Spiller because I'm waiting for him to have a big breakout game because he hasn't had a breakout game for Clemson. I think he gets it against Maryland tomorrow. Ryan Williams at Duke, Marty Gilliard, Cincy, Miami of Ohio. Watch out for Gilliard. I I think I'm going to get big points there, but I need G.J. Kinney to not pass to Damaris <laughs> Johnson. So, Kinney, if you're listening tonight, go out, put up big points. Just don't have him go to Rod's receiver, please. So should I tell Pike not to throw up the killer? <laughs> <laughs> Five-yard gain by Deion Lewis. We've had a lot of fun with that this year. Well, you know, and the great thing about it, though, is that with all the players that we've selected so far, the great players, there's still a lot of good ones out there left that we can use this season. Although, you start going down the list, and boy, oh boy, I'd, I'd love to have Joe Webb back at UAB. <laughs> and I'd like to have Colt McCoy another time. I got Colt McCoy sitting on, in the wings. I'm waiting on him a little bit later. And who knows, maybe down the line, Deion Lewis. Wait till I... Sensational freshman running back here for the Pitt Panthers could be showing up in our selection. Start breaking out my Mountain West guys on you. <laughs> yeah. Second and five now. Lewis again. Blockers in front. Gets to the edge. And one-on-one, -on -one, he's tough to stop. He just scoots ahead for a first down against John Depsey, the middle linebacker for Louisville. Of course, ABC Saturday Night Football. Little EA action. There's Greg Cooper. He's going to be taking on the Sooners tomorrow. Oklahoma and Miami. Plus, Matt Barkley. How about Damian Williams on one in there? Oh, yeah. A little USC and Cal, ABC Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. Hey, if you don't get one of the games, you can always go to ESPN360.com and see the one that you're not getting. So a good night of primetime football. Deion Lewis. And he's taken down by Malcolm Tatum. Now, I know you saw the ranking for Cal on that promo at 24, and I know that it's bothered you all week that yes. Cal is ranked ahead of Oregon after that head-to-head -head beatdown that Oregon I am on so Cal. bothered by the coaches' poll yep. and the Harris Interactive poll with all the egregious errors. We're going to show you that in a moment, but the voting where a team has played a team head-to-head, -head, thumped a team, but yep. yet, because of the preseason rankings and the perception, they're still below said team that they played head-to-head. -head. It's ridiculous. Lewis, inside the 10, stiff arm, loses the ball, 
out of bounds. So let's look at some of these that have kept me up at night and texting you and calling you yeah. nonstop, screaming over the I've phone. I've had to talk you down a couple because of times. Because Houston is 15 in the coaches' poll and Oklahoma State's 12. Now, you know what happened when Houston went to Oklahoma State. Yeah. They got the win. They beat them. And, and then they beat Texas Tech. Texas Tech, exactly. How about Iowa? Iowa knocks off Penn State in, at Happy Valley, and they're four spots behind them. Makes no sense. And then Oregon just thumps Cal. And Oregon's put together a couple good wins now. They beat Utah. I know what happened against Boise, but they lost to a top five team in the country. That needs to get straightened out. Well, it's horrible, really. Deion Lewis, he's trying to fight for that goal line. You know, that's the type of stuff that's going to... We saw Pat Forty earlier tonight here in Louisville. Yeah. That's Dash material that, on yeah, ESPN.com right you got to read that. Part of the problem, though, is that when you do things like that, when the coaches vote that way, that hurts the credibility of the BCS. Keep in mind, the two polls that we just went off on represent two-thirds right. of the BCS. Exactly. Not good. Bill Stull, he's been good tonight. 28-10. Panthers, they're thinking about a future. Wendy's 40th birthday with a double stack for 99 cents, chili for 99 cents, baked potato for 99 cents, or frosty for 99 cents. Now that's worth celebrating. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Yeah, thanks, man. It's pretty. Hey, Sonny, toss me a Keystone Light. Okay, Grandpa, but uh, why don't I just walk it over to you, all right? Come on, Nancy, put it right down the alley. <laughs> okay. Ah! What are you nuts? He's an 84-year-old man. Dad, you okay? You can't always be smooth, but your beer should be. Smooth brewed for that smooth Keystone taste. Keystone Light is always smooth, even when you're not. Uh, Grandpa, I'm so <coughs> Are nasty drafts forcing you to crank up the heat? Heating bills are reported to increase dramatically, causing your money to literally fly out the door. With Twin Draft Guard's double-sided insulated design, your utility bills can be reduced by up to 30%. Watch, air seeps under the door, but Twin Draft Guard creates an airtight seal. It's adjustable, slides under any door or window, cut the length you need, cover and slide onto the door for a draft-proof seal. Twin Draft Guard seals any gap on any floor, even carpet. Use on windows for an airtight seal. Block wind and snow, insulate garages, and basements. Seal in air conditioning. Twin Draft Guard is only $19.99. Call now and we'll double the offer. If it doesn't pay for itself the very first month, send it back for a refund. As a free gift, get the over-the-door ceramic hook absolutely free. You get it all, just $19.99. Call 1-800-709-2502. Order now and you'll get two double-sided Twin Draft Guards and the free over-the-door hanger for $19.99. Call 1-800-709-2502 or go to TwinDraftGuard.com. Call Consolidated Credit. They'll get the credit card companies to reduce or eliminate your interest. Call 800-440-5217. Consolidated credit. When credit card debt is the problem, they're the solution. Will Selva in studio, Landon Donovan and the Galaxy hosting the Chicago Fire. Donovan, 10 goals this season, tied for six most in the MLS. Both teams are 10, 6, and 11 on the season and in second place in their respective conferences. That's coming up after the football game. Now back to Joe and Rob. Back here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. They started with 42,000 in attendance, making a blackout here. They're finishing up with only those in white, gold, and dark blue remaining cheering. And the power game with Henry Hynoski right to the end zone. The big fullback tacks on another one for this Panthers running game, which has been going downhill the entire fourth quarter, Rod. Yeah, yeah and Pitt is responsible for that. They just pounded them with the football. I said before, you finish a football game by running at your opponent and making them helpless. And Pitt did that. They had a couple drives where they just took the fight out of Louisville. Dan Hutchins tacks on another extra point. Pitt with 28 unanswered points since halftime. Yeah, and it's been 
due to this combination on the ground. Second half, great performance by a couple of freshmen, in particular Graham, 75 yards, averaging over six yards a carry. Lewis got most of the carries in the first half, but picked up a few more in the second half. A lot of production out of that tailback spot for Pitt. You know, anytime I, you see running backs, I, I can't help but think about Stephon Johnson at USC. I know you want to join me in a shout out and wishing him a speedy recovery after that weight room accident he had at USC. Such a freak accident. Graham and Lewis, the dynamic freshman duo. I want to remind you that coming up after our game here on ESPN2, it will be the MS, uh, MLS game of the week. Chicago Fire, LA Galaxy. Uh, JP Della Camera calling that game. And David Beckham will be in action for the Galaxy. You know, and that's Stephon Johnson accident. I, I read where there was 275 pounds yes. on that bench press when he lost control of that on his neck. Such a scary scene that must have been, but we hope the best in his continued recovery. Trent Guy. Talk about somebody who's had to make a recovery, Trent Guy, who was lucky to be alive. He was shot at 19 times outside a nightclub a year ago. One bullet struck him, lodged in his back, missed his spine by just an inch. That was in summer of 08, and he has worked hard to get back. He actually played last season. I remember we did the exactly. game when he made his return. Dramatic. You know, tomorrow on game day, there's going to be another inspirational story of trying to make a comeback, and that, of course, is BC linebacker Mark Herzlick. Game day starts at 10 Eastern from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Inspirational story. A very special day tomorrow on game day from D.C. And there's Chai Chester, the six foot nine receiver. You know, game day usually filled with those visits to top five power programs for their big games. And this is one of the but special ones. This is an opportunity to really connect with what this sport is all about. Proud Warriors trying very, very hard, and Herzlick is one of those. You can't help but hear his story and listen to him, see him, and not be touched by it. it it's just impossible that you would not be touched by it. And he's going to join Chris Lee and Kirk on set tomorrow, Mark Herzlick, in the midst of his battle with cancer. Froman now pressured, steps in, and that was a nice throw to Doug Beaumont, and a good effort by Beaumont to come across the middle and haul that in. And all of a sudden, a little hurry up here from Louisville, and they've moved the ball down to the 38 of pick. Froman has time, and once again, a low throw, but a catch. Trent got. Hard to believe this game was close at halftime until Pitt opened it up in the third quarter with Stahl throwing a couple of bombs. Inside handoff, Powell. And he powers his way across the 20. 13-yard gain. It's taken down by Antoine Reed. Good, strong run by Powell. Try to get a little confidence boost here at the end are the cards. Froman and Chichester with the stiff arm down to the 11-yard line. Well, this is good work for Froman, too. I mean, he gets a chance to run a two-minute drill, which he hasn't had an opportunity to do. Remember, he's a JC transfer. This is his first game. This is good work for him right now. That was an awkward handoff. Flags come in as Powell was able to secure the ball. Let's see what the ref has to say. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense, number 78, 15-yard penalty, first down. Pitt defense has clamped down this second half thanks to linebacker Adam Gunn. Yeah, and he's done a tremendous job. Hard to believe that this man is playing football after having breaking his neck last year. Broken in the opening game of the season, and he's been all over the field. No signs of any hesitation for him making plays, four tackles on the night. You know, I was stunned to hear that the doctors told him that because they fused the vertebrae in his neck, that they feel it's stronger than before, but still, overcoming that mental hurdle of going back out there, knowing you broke your neck, and yet he's going full force. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, second down. Well, and, and not just knowing that you broke your neck, but that your older brother broke his neck playing football as well. His brother Sanford suffered the same exact injury 
at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. He was temporarily paralyzed before his recovery from a broken neck to the end zone. And that was overthrown. He was trying to get it to Troy Paisley. A Froman taking a shot here with just over a minute to go. How fortunate the Gunn family is to have Adam up and about playing football again and his older brother only being temporarily paralyzed. Of course, there's one of the toughest guys in football for the past three decades, from an offensive lineman to a no-nonsense head coach. Off the chest of Chichester, and that goes in complete. Chichester is a matchup problem at 6'9". Not the quickest guy, but because of his size, he's a problem out there. He's open whenever he's down the field. Two years ago, he actually suited up for the Louisville basketball team. Played in six games. Six foot nine. And not the tallest receiver in the country. Who would that be? There's a receiver at Army. At 6'10". Froman. And that is caught at the 15-yard line by Doug Beaumont. Legal forward pass, offense, number nine. Pass was beyond the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty, loss of down, first down, Pittsburgh. Want to remind you that the MLS game, Chicago and LA, will be coming up at the conclusion of this Big East season opener for both these teams. The Pitt Panthers, the road ahead, Rod. Yeah, you know, you, you, got, a, you got yourself a W right here at this game tonight. Nothing to worry about there. And then you start looking at the tough ones they have down the line, Notre Dame, South Florida. How about Rutgers? And then the end of the year, West Virginia and Cincinnati. It's Showdown. not going to be easy, easy for them. They've got a tough road ahead of them. You know, you really look at how that schedule wraps up in the Big East, and you can see the last two weeks determining the Big East championship. Now, a lot's going to be said, and a few of these games are going to be on our Friday primetime series. You got Cincy, West Virginia. You got West Virginia, South Florida. Cincy, with what's happening in the top ten and all the upsets in college football, they could just keep winning and watch everybody in front of them start falling down. They could continue to rise up the rankings. They could, but you know, uh, they don't want to hear about that right now. No, they don't. <laughs> and this pit team and the way they play tonight, if Bill Stahl plays with this kind of confidence and the aggressive downfield shots and the freshman running backs can continue to do their thing, this pit team is in play. His third quarter was as good a quarter of play as I've seen by Stahl in his career at Pitt. Well, our final score is 35 to 10. Pitt moves their mark to 4-1. For more on this game, you can tune in to ESPN News for a post-game extra. Coming up next year on ESPN2, it's the MLS Game of the Week, Chicago Fire and the LA Galaxy. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Rod Gilmore and our crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. MLS is coming up next, 35-10, Pitt takes it. Now let's get you out to the MLS Game of the Week. Right now, the MLS Cup is being crafted, and the playoffs begin soon. Tonight at the Home Depot Center, just outside L.A., two teams with legitimate hopes of a title square off. Brian McBride is back from injury and ready to lead the Chicago Fire through the East. For the L.A. Galaxy, David Beckham has been fantastic in the last three games he's played, and Landon Donovan will see if he can help get the Galaxy to their first playoff since 2005. The road to the MLS Cup playoffs continues next. This is our MLS Game of the Week. It is the Chicago Fire on the road taking on the LA Galaxy from the Home Depot Center in Carson, California. Playoff implications are certainly on the line tonight, although neither team can actually clinch a spot 
this evening. Here's the way it looks in terms of the playoff hunt. Top two teams in each conference will advance, and then it's four wild cards after that. So right now, Chicago and L.A. are in a very good spot. We welcome you to the Home Depot Center here in Carson with John Harks. I'm J.P. Delacamera. The Galaxy are trying to get to the playoffs for the first time since they won MLS Cup in 2005. They're hoping that David Beckham can lead them there. Well, absolutely, J.P., and they certainly missed him last week when they played away to Columbus Crew, but hey, he's back and he's fit. They're hoping that he's fit because in warm-up, actually, he was wincing just a bit. His shoulder was bothering him to see throughout this game if that becomes a factor, and we want to focus on that, obviously. He said he's fit, he's ready to go, so hopefully David Beckham is healthy because when he is, he is an inspiration to watch. And here he is. This is what he's been doing. You talked about him in the last three games, JP. He's had a very good season. This is the Beckham that everybody wanted to see, but he's putting the ball in the back of the net, and he's connecting on those passes. He's executing in the final third. He has been very much instrumental and a, and a really inspirational leader to this team so far this season for the Galaxy. What a turnaround they've had. And it can't be a, a one-man show. He needs help. Landon Donovan should provide that. Absolutely. And when these two combined, that's what makes it even more interesting. Everybody wants to tune in to see these players, the way they hook up, the way they identify each other on the field. They read each other so well. And they know what Beckham's vision's like. So Landon, he is benefiting big time from that. As for the Chicago Fire, unfortunately for them, they're missing Quatemoc Blanco and Chris Rall. I guess more pressure now on their striker, Brian McBride. Well, it's, it's not pressure that's not well received. A guy like Brian McBride has all the experience in the world. One of the best striker we've produced in the USA. And here we see him getting a very important equalizing goal against Toronto FC. They gained that point there. He's an inspiration, great character. What a great leader to have. He will accept that responsibility. It's good that he's up front for the Chicago Fire tonight. Seven goals on the season in total for Brian McBride. He only missed eight games with the shoulder. I say only. He was expected to miss more. He came back about a month ahead of schedule. But that's the way Brian McBride is. They'll need a big game for Brian McBride tonight if the Fire are going to get a win on the road. They lead Major League Soccer in road wins. your engine feels and when it's running clean you feel it which is why Pennzoil motor oil doesn't just help prevent sludge Pennzoil actively cleans out sludge up to 15 percent the first time you use it so make your next oil change a Pennzoil change and feel the clean not just oil Pennzoil come in now for music downloads and a service certificate with any Pennzoil oil change 10 blade Suction. Nurse, what's that? That's the appendix, doctor. Oh, that. Oh, that's shortcuts from IOTV. Viewers can hit the C button on their IO remote for all kinds of information, like news and weather, without leaving a show. Doctor, what's that? Looks like the forecast for a beautiful weekend. No, here, next to the gallbladder. Oops. Doctor, doctor. Press the C button on your IO remote for news, weather, movies, and more. Shortcuts, only from IOTV. But you know how pricey these German cars are to maintain, right? 
Actually, Volkswagen has no charge scheduled carefree maintenance, even the CC. No charge, even on the CC. You know what they say about the best things in life, amigo? It's awesome for Volkswagen owners. Welcome back, everyone, to our MLS Game of the Week. Tonight, Chicago Fire are on the road taking on the LA Galaxy. Home Depot Center in Carson, California is the venue. It's time to check out the starting lineups for these two teams tonight, presented by Budweiser. When we look at the LA Galaxy in the 4-4-2 for Bruce Arena's side, Donovan up top with Bud. You see Beckham come back in centrally. Chris Klein on the right. Sean Franklin as a right back coming back from injury this year. And De La Garza shift to the left. Todd Donovan will be out of that back four tonight. Chicago Fire, well, Niako and McBride up front. Lowry, no Blanco, no Rolf, as we said earlier on, will be in the midfield. Map on the left, Pop on the right. Conde and Brown will have their hands full trying to juggle this attacking force of the Galaxy. Galaxy welcome David Beckham back to the line. He missed the one game with an ankle injury, had some ice on his shoulder yesterday right after training, and we saw him wincing earlier this evening, so we'll see how he goes tonight as he makes his return to the Galaxy starting lineup. They are missing Stefani Miglioranzi, who left last week's game against Columbus with an injury. That's a loss for them in the middle. We are underway, Galaxy in white, Chicago Fire in red. Immediate long ball is knocked out by the Fire, away from Chris Klein. Neither one of these teams could clinch a playoff spot officially tonight. A win gets them closer, and they would clinch if DC loses tomorrow against Chiba. So while they can't win it tonight, they could clinch a spot tomorrow. The draw, by the way, means that neither team could clinch this weekend. Long throw in. That's headed away by Conde, 22. Watch for him on that fire back line, which has been ravaged by injuries all season yeah, we're talking about cigars being out we've also they've also lost Tim Ward started as a right back to them throughout the season and then Bukari Samari who shifted out a little bit of uh, controversy there throughout the season so he's, he's moved on Wilbur is also out so guys at the back just keep dropping so CJ Brown's had to play a more prominent role he is their captain